I'd like to open up the meeting. This is the Whateley Select Board meeting of June 2nd, 2021. First item on the agenda is uh, approval of meeting minutes of May 12th, 2021. I move we approve to the meeting minutes from May 12th. Second. Okay, any discussion? Oh, roll call vote, Joyce? Aye. Jonathan? Yep. Fred, yes. Okay, vendor and payroll warrants, because they were all in our packet information. Any comments on it? No, not for me. Okay, moving on, public comment. Anybody from the public that wishes to make comments on items that are not listed on our agenda for this evening? No, okay. Moving on for our scheduled appointments. First appointment. Well, another minute here, I guess we can start. Is uh, from Jared Glanzer Berger to discuss proposed host community agreement for marijuana retail establishment to be located at 424 State Road. Hi guys, this is Jared. I'm just on the road. I apologize that I'm not able to join by video. Okay. What's the deal? Uh, no, you want to say Brian or shall I? Um, you can go ahead. <laughs> okay. All right, Will. Doesn't matter. Yeah, that's just, it's a very straightforward uh, HCA in the mold of all of our other HCAs. This is for the retail operation. So instead of manufacturing facility, it says retail sales. Um, it's got the same uh, 3%. It's got the same uh, local donations. It's got um, pretty much all the other same language. Um, I think one of the whereas is changed at the beginning that uh, acknowledges that there is a um, already the manufacturing facility in Waitley. Um, but I, and it's really a change of uh, just those parts, all the other um, meaningful terms of the agreement are the same as what we've agreed to in the past. So I would uh, put this forward as something that we should um, should be uncontroversial to vote on this. And, and, and maybe at some point we'll actually be able to implement one of these. <laughs> yes. right. John, uh, I'm happy to report that our triple C final inspection or sorry, uh, post provisional license inspection which leads to our final license is scheduled for Monday. Um, and so if we're successful on that, uh, this is for our Seven River Road cultivation facility. If we are successful on that, then we will be able to have uh, plants planted and we will be uh, moving forward. But what's the, if I were one of your investors, I'd say plants, plants planted by when? Uh, July 15th is the uh, Triple C meeting. So after they approve, uh, you know, God willing, if they approve us on the 15th, then uh, that that very day we can begin planting. And, and, and when does the first uh, and when do you expect um, invoicing to be able to happen in terms of in terms of actual revenue generation? That's a great question. Um, so we hope to harvest by the end of September or early October. Um, we uh, we may need to put it on ice uh, that I mean that literally. Um, depending on how quickly we're able to get our Three River Road processor uh, kind of built out and, uh, and ready for ready for work, um, but so that's um, that's our that's our hope, and um, we're we're very happy to be able to get plants to the ground. Right, because you're strictly vertical integration, right? You're not planning on selling your cultivated product outside of your uh, outside of your enterprise, correct? I mean, we might consider it, you know, if the right uh, opportunity came through, but, you know, our, our intention is really to process it ourselves. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm with Joyce. This is good. Okay. So was that a second mo motion? Oh, I, I, I move that we approve this host community agreement. I'll second. 
Okay, any further discussion? We'll call vote, Joyce? Aye. Jonathan? Yep. Fred, yes. Okay, moving on our agenda. I see. Thank you guys. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thanks. I see Mr. Uh, Morin is, is here for our, our next uh, subject here to discuss uh, bikes, fight cancer, bike rides scheduled for June 12th. We are back. We're excited to be back. Um, yeah, we, you know, it's been fast and furious dealing with the, the COVID adjustments, but uh, it looks like we're, we're getting ready for June 12th. Is this the same event that happened two years ago? It is. Yeah. yeah. The one that I promised to attend and I and I and I, I don't think I did. We definitely noticed. Yeah, I know. I, I noticed. I know. You got another chance. Only only eleven days. June twelfth or July twelfth? June twelfth. How many miles? Twenty five and fifty. Okay, so it goes through several several communities, I guess. Not yes. just lately. Yeah, all, all, all flat communities, I presume. Fairly flat, actually. Yeah. The 25 is a lovely ride. Okay, and what, just what hours of the day is this going to be occurring? So we're going to start around 7.30, and we're not doing a post-event gathering this year, obviously, because when we were planning, you know, there's a lot more COVID restrictions in place. So we're guessing to be wrapped up by two. Um, basically, when the riders last rider comes back we'll start cleaning up okay and you've uh, informed our police department about this event so they're aware of your riders and yep and we're doing a staggered start this year so there won't be a big group of riders it's going to be kind of trickling out um in smaller groups okay and you've, you've, you've been in touch with the Board of Health and they're okay with, with everything. Yeah. Yeah, we'll be doing bag lunches. So grab and go type uh, versus the food trucks we had two years ago. Yeah, and we talked to them in early May. So basically our COVID protocols matched Pre the restrictions before the last round of openings. Um, so we're, we're definitely on, on the cautious side of things for sure. Yeah, great. Uh, now, Brian, we have that uh, form that you, like where you get sign off from all the various departments. I assume that's all been taken care of. Kind of. Um, <laughs> With kind COVID, of. I, I've. Oh, sorry, Brian. Go ahead. No, I was just gonna. I was just gonna say what you wrote in your email, so you can say it. Um, so I've been in contact with the majority of the department heads to at least get a verbal sign off. You know, mm -hmm. I, I haven't been driving around to each office this time. Okay. Um, but yeah. We'll make we sure. have like a, a paper trail, an email trail, some kind of trail where we know that all those folks have been in touch and they, whatever, um, I don't know, restrictions is the right word, but whatever concerns they had, they've been addressed and so on. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I think this makes all the sense in the world. If, if, if the Boston Garden can be packed to capacity uh, with everybody spitting on each other, then, you know, this is fine. A hundred people outside hanging out. Yeah, I mean, I, I still would have done the tent with the beers, but you know. Well, we have a tent just in case it rains. We, we do have the tent. No beer. <laughs> no no beer, beer though. But <laughs> yeah. We're still giving away pint glasses as a as the freebie. From Hitchcock? No. Uh, where'd we get them from? Um, no. They, we just ordered them. They're custom okay. glasses. All right. Is this does this is this a uh, motion requirement, Brian, or what is this? Yeah, it would be good to have a motion to. I'll make a motion to do whatever these guys want to do. <laughs> it's a little broad, don't you think? I maybe maybe the motion can be to have the bike for cancer race as planned. If that's the case, I'll say I second that. <laughs> okay. Any further discussion? Okay. Roll we'll call vote, Jonathan. Joyce? Yep. Fred, yes. Okay. Uh, moving thank on. You. Uh, thank you. Thank you guys. Uh, Amy, thank you for your help too. Okay, thanks. Uh, moving on, 
Maybe we'll we'll wait till six thirty for every source in case other people want. Can we move up to Keith? Keith is with us. Uh, talking about chapter 90 project requests and reimbursements. Keith? Yes, um, I'm just looking to, you know, bring your attention a project request that I'm going to be um, leaving at the town office as long as you approve it for your signatures. And that is for the chip ceiling that is scheduled on our regular basis that we do uh, you know, six year rotation on the roads and this year for chip seal, which we do every June is um, Swamp Road, Westbrook Road, LaSalle Drive and Claverick Road. Um, the probably the worst condition road of all of those is Westbrook Road. Um, however, it's imperative that we continue with the, the program to keep them in, in in, in tip top shape as best as they can so that they don't start to deteriorate and become riddled with potholes. So um, the project request total for those is um, $45,000 of which will <clears throat> chapter 90. Um, and as you know, we were more or less holding back on <clears throat> chapter 90 this year. Um, so we're in excellent shape as far as um, a balance, I didn't do the math, but we probably have um, somewhere around 150,000 remaining after this project request, um, which again, we were sort of holding back with the anticipation of having to use it for the Haydenville Road project. But now that we know that the state has come forward, we're in good shape with chapter 90. So. Um, just wanted to let you know that. On Westbrook Road, is it the entire road or the entire all, all of all of them, the, the complete length of all the roads that I mentioned. Oh, okay. If you must. I know, Jonathan, it'll be an inconvenience for you, but um, oh, it's again, just, it's it's a you know we. Once they, once they get swept up afterwards, they, they um, and the same thing, Joyce lives on Westbrook and I do too. I ha we have to endure it for a few weeks while it's loose stone, but then we get it swept up and they'll be um, in good shape again. Okay. When do you expect this to start? Um, I'm waiting for a date sometime before the end of the fiscal year. So this month in June, I guess you're saying? Yes. Okay. And all this will take what one one week? One day. One day for everything. All roads. Okay. 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 So you're, you're not gonna chip seal on, on uh June eleventh, right? Before these guys try riding their bikes on it. They're not mm -hmm. going on this, are they? No. Okay. They won't be on any of that section for that. Nope. No. It was slippery. <laughs> Okay. okay, do we need any action on this, Brian, or is it just information? Uh, well, you need to sign the uh, the project requests. Um, but yeah, I think you should make a motion to approve them. Well, motion to approve well, the uh, chip ceiling plan second. by... by uh, uh, second. Okay, any further discussion? Okay, roll call vote, Jonathan. Joyce? Aye. Brad? Yes. Okay. Moving on. Uh, Brian, you want to get into the COVID stuff now? Or something uh, else you want before 6 30? Um, let's talk about can we go to number seven, new business? Number seven, new business? Yep. Okay. We'll just get that out of the way. Um, so we need to authorize contract signatory for the regional construction services bid from FERCUC. Um, usually that would be the, um, the chair of the board. I'm, I'm also mindful that if, if you follow past practices of the board, then you'll have a new chair starting next meeting. 
Um, but I think it would still be good if, if you want us to do the current chair. I think that would make sense. By all means. <laughs> okay. And this is for construction bids. Okay, that they're they're seeking bids right now. What's the, what's the status of, of that? The the bids were have already been um, are in, and they're waiting to award them on our behalf. So this is the Franklin County Regional Council of Governments. The we call them county bids. It's where they do all the um, well, the, like for instance, the bidding for the school parking lot <clears throat> driveway to be repaved. And I have all the results of all the, <clears throat> so it's all the construction bids throughout the entire year that the highway department utilizes. Okay. 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 So, the, so they already received bids for this, this year already. So just, uh, our desire to use them and to have somebody to sign. Yeah, this is something relatively new that they're, I guess, from a legal purpose, they're starting to require that all, all towns, um, I don't know, do you know the exact wording of it, Brian? I don't have it in front of me. Uh, they just want it. They just want proof that, that who's ever signing the, who's ever signing the contract has the authority to do it. Yeah. So are okay. we are we committed to using these bids? We we when we for instance when I submit the quantities and estimates that I anticipate, it doesn't mean that I have to use all of that material. So if 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 I say I want to, um, for instance, gravel, if I if I estimate that I'm going to use. 5,000 ton of gravel and we're not obligated to, to do that. If I ended up only using 2,000 ton, there's no, no, um, no problems for it. Okay. Any further discussion? No. Um, I, I move we authorize our uh, chair, uh, select board chair to um, sign on behalf of Waitley for these uh, services. Second. Okay. Uh, roll call vote. Joyce? Aye. Jonathan? Yep. Fred? Yes. Okay. Moving on. Uh, Brian? Brian, what do you want to do? Is Eversource? Yeah, we're a little early, but. Uh, I mean, these are estimates. It's not a, it's not a public hearing. It, it's, oh, okay. Those are estimates for timing. So if you want to. Okay, okay, so. You want to move forward, you can. Nick, Nick is from Eversource. Do we know? I believe so. He's from Ever something. Hi, right, this is Nick from Eversource. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, yeah, we invited you to tonight's meeting, Nick, to uh, to find out more information on what's being planned for, I guess, upgrades and improvements to the utility poles in town. Here, we noticed there's several that look, several that are marked, uh, several routes, uh, and either your 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 crew or or Verizon or, or Comcast went well or somebody else is <coughs> going through uh, inspecting the poles and I guess identifying which ones are going to be replaced or or, or not and I, I guess we'd like to hear what your your schedule is for this and and how long is is all this gonna gonna take. Uh, we have some events being planned uh, next year in, in town uh, on these, some of these routes, parade routes and celebrations. So we're hoping that this would be done by then. Uh, one of our, our concerns is, I guess, past practices are showing that replacement poles uh, are taking, well, over a year to, to finalize. I mean, we see that, I think it's the electrical wires have been uh, 
The poles have been placed, the new poles in, the electrical wires placed, but the old poles are still there. Uh, some of these have been there for over a year. Uh, I guess that's one of our concerns is to see all these uh, poles on uh, for the next uh, this year or next year th throughout town. I, I guess that's that's a concern. We we it just doesn't look good, and we want to know what your schedule is and if that's going to be any any different. What are you going to do different than than you have in the past? So this, uh, I guess unsightly view of two poles everywhere that doesn't continue very long. So, okay, Nick, I guess I'll turn it over to you to uh, explain what your, what your plan is here. Hey folks, can you, uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. All right. So uh, my name is Nick Langoni. I'm a uh, field engineer with Eversource and, um, so on behalf of uh, the Yankee Candle Factory on Christian Lane, um, Eversource has been asked to increase the, um, the load supplied down to Christian Lane to, to their factory um, because they're expanding, which is a good thing. And, oh, I got a two-year-old over here, so you might have to bear with me for one second. Um, so... In order to meet the demands of the customer, uh, we need to reconductor Christian Lane, which all that means is we have one wire size and we need bigger wire to meet the demands of the customer. Um, and in order to do that, that requires some infrastructure changes. So, you know, there's aged infrastructure in that area. There's probably some undersized poles, rotted cross arms, stuff that's been there since, you know, the 50s. And a lot of that stuff needs to be, you know, brought up to today's standard. So that means, you know, slightly taller poles, new fiberglass cross arms that are going to be more resilient, um, increasing reliability in the whole area. Um, and uh, sorry, my two-year-old is pushing a chair. It's all right. uh, um, where was I? All right. So the timeline is what you're wondering, <laughs> Lincoln. Be quiet, please. Um, so the, the target date for Yankee Candle is, I think, first quarter of 2022. Um, we're going to try our best to meet that date. Um, to get that done, it's going to take coordination, obviously, with Verizon, who owns the rights to all the poles in the area. So Verizon is going to be responsible for actually replacing those poles. Um, once those new poles are in the ground, that's when Eversource will come in. Excuse me, Lincoln. I got to talk to these people. You want to sit on my lap? <laughs> we can have chocolate after dinner. Okay. Uh, if, he's on, if he's on your nap, your lap, Nick, I think you have to turn your camera on. All right, I can do that. Lincoln, come here. <laughs> come here. <laughs> you got to say hi. <laughs> say hi. There he is. This is Lincoln. Hi, hi Link. Can you say hi? <laughs> yeah, there he goes. Um, anyway, so where was I? So infrastructure, relying on Verizon. Um, you're concerned about the double poles, as we, as we call them, when you have a pole replacement. And the reason that exists is because there's kind of a coordinated effort between um, several utilities when there is a pole change. So say you have a 40-foot pole and you're upgrading to a 45-foot pole, which is likely with likely what we're dealing with here. Um, the order of events is that Verizon will come, put a new pole right next to the old one. Then starting at the top of the pole, you know, power lines at the top, and then it goes down to um, usually Comcast and Verizon. One by one, we each transfer from the old pole to the new pole. Okay. Usually whatever source does is we'll transfer from the old pole to the new one, and then we'll cut the pole. So the old pole is not interfering and, you know, we have clearance to the, to the power lines and then, you know, one by one, each utility will come. So it is an unfortunate consequence of this kind of work where there is, um, you know, times where you're going to have those double poles, but I think what we need to do is coordinate with the other new utilities and make, make this a priority that, you know, per agreement with the town, we, we really can't have these double poles hanging around and we can try our, we can try our best to, you know, expedite that. Um, but you know, that's, that's going to be more than 
just Eversource. That's we're talking all the utilities need to work together. So um, I would like to pursue that, you know, try to make everybody happy and, you know, keep the double poles, um, you know, limited amount of time. But um, it's not something that I can, you know, promise is going to be, you know, a next day thing. Um, does that kind of answer your question? At least, well, one, um, at least one of the questions. So you said first quarter of 22, are you talking fiscal year or calendar year? What are you, what are you talking? Uh, calendar year. And I will say that is an aggressive goal that we're going to try our best to meet. Um, I can't promise first quarter. You know, like I said, we need to wait for the other utilities to do a lot of this infrastructure work. Um, but working with the customer, we're, we're trying to aggressively pursue, you know, first quarter, maybe second quarter of next year. Okay, because you, several of your locations that I, I've noticed are not, are not on Christian Lane, which directly feeds Yankee Candle. Is it possible to do these other locations first? Because we're planning an event next June uh, on Christian Lane, I, I would assume, or parts of Christian Lane. Uh, is it possible to do these other locations first? And maybe wait till June or July to, to do Christian Lane, say closer to Yankee Candle. Uh, that's something I would have to talk to both Yankee Candle with, um, and you know the rest of engineering. Now the bulk of the work is on Christian Lane. There are a couple other areas that, um, for kind of higher level engineering purposes, also need full replacements. Basically, we we have to create some reliability kind of loops in order to. Um, you know, better serve the customer. Um, myself or my supervisor, Eric, could probably speak to that kind of bigger picture stuff. Um, I think Aaron is on this call. Aaron, did you, want to maybe, did you maybe want to talk quickly about um, the other areas that are not Christian Lane? Yeah, sure. Uh, the second part is Long Plain Road. Uh, again, similar to the Christian Lane portion, it requires uh, reconductoring pole replacements as well as part of the Yankee Candle upgrade. Uh, that's just regarding some of the reclosers and automation that is in the area. So if we switch load on the circuits, uh, we can still serve our customers. Okay, so there is double poles that, that have existed for I'd say over a year at several locations through town. What's the schedule to removing them or, or finishing them installations before you start a new one? I mean, is it gonna be ongoing for several years? No, I, I, I can understand your frustration there, sir. Uh, so I guess my question is, what are those locations that you're referring to? Uh, you know, if, if I think Nick had explained it, once we transfer our lines over to the new pole, we cut that pole, and then it requires the other utilities to transfer uh, their services as well. Uh, if you if you let me know those other locations, I can start looking into that for you. Again, well, I understand I understand the aesthetics of that having double poles. Um, I I can tell you at least three I know, and, and maybe Keith can add if he had those others. But you know, River Road is one. You've got Christian. Christian Lane near the bridge, and I think you've got a Haydenville Road near Conway Road area. I don't know, Keith, is there other locations? Yeah, the, the, the easiest way for Eversource to look into it, it would be everywhere that all of the voltage regulators were put in, whether it be the, um, the a single voltage regulator on a new pole or whether it be the, the three bank pole system, but all of those locations that were done, like like Fred said about a year ago, are all those, and there may be a few other spots around that I'm not, you know, that I haven't gone to make a list, but the simplest way to explain it is everywhere voltage regulators were put in. Okay, fair enough. Can uh, start looking at that to help address this issue. Um, Fred, can I jump in? Yeah, go, yeah, go ahead, Jonathan. Um, I guess my con I mean, I, I share Fred's concerns uh, and I've got a, a couple of comments and I'm gonna try to choose my words carefully. Um, 
when Nick, when you talk about putting up a poll and then cutting it down, it, it doesn't sound like that has historically happened with the polls that Keith was, was has been referring to, that it, they're still full polls. So that practice it isn't always followed. Um, and so I, I have to admit that I am not overly confident that that practice would be followed here as well. Um, and, and you'll forgive me if I, if I say to, to both you guys, I, I, I don't believe that Eversource, and I'm gonna put Comcast and Verizon in there as well, care about aesthetics of the neighborhood. I, I, just, I just don't. Um, you know, and that's coming from a guy who believes in, 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 in markets pretty, pretty, pretty broadly. Um, <clears throat> but you guys don't care about aesthetics. It's the last thing that, that, that you're concerned about. So when I hear this, I, I, it, there's a note of skepticism that, that, that rings in my mind. Um, <clears throat> and then I guess the last thing that I'm concerned about, and there's not necessarily an answer for any of these things. And, and again, the aesthetics comes from the fact that, uh, and I, forgive me if, if I'm incorrect in saying this, that Eversource is the company that took down all the trees along Christian Lane and, and left Christian Lane with a whole heck of a lot of tree stumps, large ones that are gonna cost property owners an awful lot of money to remove. And it wasn't part of the, 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 the negotiation. Again, if I am wrong, I apologize. I have no problem admitting what I am. But that tells me that, you know, we're, we're going to do what we have to do and we're going to leave the, <clears throat> the, the cleanup to somebody else. The last thing, and maybe this falls on the shoulders of the town to be more diligent about this. A number of years ago, whoever I was on the board with, I think it was, I think it was Joyce and Fred, um, we all agreed that when one of the utilities comes to, to, to talk with us, that we really should invite all of the utilities so that the answer of, well, it's, it, 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 it takes communication between all the utilities, which is absolutely accurate. I couldn't agree with it more. Um, it, it, it actually is, is followed through on rather than, well, I did my part, but Comcast won't do their part or Verizon won't do their part. Um, it, it's a trend line. It's a theme that is unmistakable that, that there becomes finger pointing that stuff just doesn't happen. And I, I would bet my last dollar that if you guys were the property owners that this work was happening on and the conditions of your property or, or the, you know, the town layout of your property were left in the condition that they are um, and, and things pro pro prolonged for so long because of finger pointing or, or what have yeah. you, as, 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 as property owners, you wouldn't be happy about it either. So I, I, I just, I, 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 I don't have a lot of faith and I wish that you guys would, would build that faith, but I don't have it. So I'm, I'm, I, I want to do what Yankee Candle needs to do to grow because Nick, you're right. That's in the best interest of everybody, but you know, homeowners are just as important as, 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 as our corporate neighbors. So I'll, I'll stop there. All right. Thank you. Uh, you brought up a lot of good points and, you know, what I'd like to say, I guess, to the select board is, um, you know, let's work together. Let's, you know, I'm hearing your concerns. Uh, when you say that Eversource doesn't care about aesthetics, um, what we do care about is the interests of the town, the interests of our customers. Um, you know, that's kind of paramount there. And the town, such as Whaley, that's kind of like a super customer. You guys speak for everybody. Um, that's, that's what, that's what you were voted in. So I think what we should do is maybe if we could get something in writing of your concerns, we can meet with Verizon, meet with Com Comcast, let them know that, you know, if this project is going to go forward, we need to um, address these issues proposed by the town. And, you know, that way we can, you know, try to accommodate everyone's needs, including, you know, Yankee Candle, the people who live along Christian Lane, um, and the greater population as a whole. I mean, you guys all share these, share this area. So is that something you guys would be interested in? I'll speak for myself. I know I would. Yeah, I, I think that that would be good to do. And 
let me just ask, who, who's in charge of all of, of all of this? Moving to put new poles in and the wires and all that. Is it is it Eversource? Who's controlling this? Is it Eversource or is it all three of you on, on your own schedule and whoever wants to do it? Who's in charge of it? So First, I, I actually, Ellen Cummings is on this call. I'm the State Government Affairs Director for Verizon. Um, I was asked to show up on the call. Verizon was, um, although um, I didn't, wasn't really given what the call was about and we don't really have any work uh, going on right now in Wheatley. So, um, Wally, I'm sorry. Um, so we actually have the poll set in, in your municipality. Um, that mm -hmm. is if, we're on the poll. If there, if Verizon is not on the poll, which happened on some polls on Christian, um, we uh, we were not going to be on the polls, and Eversource would have that poll set. Um, if there are ever any um, issues in your municipality in regards to Verizon, I'd be happy to hear them. Um, I do understand there's a sensitivity on double polls. Um, as Berman, um Edwards has pointed out, um, Verizon has, I mean, we have been on a mission the past uh, several years throughout the state to reduce double polls. Um, it is true though, Verizon is on the bottom. So we will always be the last to transfer. Um, and um, if I'm the set, I will pull the poll what's left as well. Um, we've done a very good job in, in your municipality uh, to remove double polls. As a matter of fact, I pulled the latest double poll report um, this morning um, just to, to make sure if my data from over a week ago when I was asked to be on the call was correct. I'm showing 19. There are a lot of double polls on River Road, but at this time, none of them are sitting with me. Um, they're waiting on me. And um, one of the mission, again, my company has had is to make sure that there's no double polls that are sitting in my court ready for me to go that are, that are over 30 days old. So, so who's so, waiting? So these 19, if they're not, if they're not Eversource and they're not Verizon, what are they I waiting for, say, Comcast? Yeah, I didn't say that none were sitting with Eversource. I just said none are sitting with me. Um, I know Nick, you probably, I don't know if you pulled the latest report too, so you probably saw their, there are some, but there are a lot that are sitting with with the with Comcast, the cable company. Okay, so who's who's in charge of getting Comcast to to move their wires off the poles? So all the utilities, that? sir, all the utilities participate in a database called Engines, um, and that is how once a pole, a double pole is is created. Say a pole is set. Um, from say this, an upgrade job that's going on from the power company, whether there is an accident, um, whether there's, you know, the Mass Broadband Institute has, has been out there as well. Once a double pole is created, it's entered into the database and then it flows for who moves next. So for, for example, Nick's folks are, the, are on the top of the pole. So they would get a notification for that pole, double pole in engines that it's that he's up, falls in his court, he can move. Once his folks transfer onto the new pole, then depending on who's on there next, say if it's Comcast, there's not a lot of other attachments out there, um, the notification would be sent to them, to their contact in the database saying, falls in your court, time to transfer. And then again, then lastly, it comes to me and then my folks go out, we transfer, and then we take the poll with us because we're on the bottom and it's my set area. Okay, but so who's, who's monitoring this process? There, each utility has people that are specifically pointed out that the notification goes to them. Right, but, but overall, the whole process to get the second poll removed, who, it sounds like nobody's really following up to see if the next person is doing their 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 job like they're supposed to or the or the third person is doing it i i, I don't hear anybody not really that. understanding that i mean it goes to the it goes to the next yeah, person I, it's I, their responsibility to move i mean i've had times and i know that the that uh, power has too when i talking to a municipality for example a town manager a town administrator will call me about a poll i can pull it up in the database 
and I can tell them that I'm seeing, for example, um, Comcast is still on it um, and they haven't moved yet. I mean, in those, there are times that um, I, I'll tell the town manager, I, I'd be happy to give them a, I'll be happy to send my counterpart there um, an email and say, hey, that you're looking to get this, they're looking to get this poll removed. A lot of times the town manager or administrator will do the same thing. They'll call um, whoever the state government affairs person is or say, we're just, we're talking about just Comcast right now as an example and ask them, say, this is a poll we're, we're looking to have taken care of. I hear that you're next up, can you move? Okay, let me, if, if, let me, let me jump in. I, I'm wondering whether it, the easier way to ask Fred's question is, does anyone at the PUC monitor this? No. No, okay. I, I, you, you would think that they might, because again, they're, you know, they, they're the regulatory entity for all three companies. Um, so it, it just struck me that perhaps someone at the PUC was monitoring the, the communication between the three organizations. But if not, that's fine. I, I just thought that might be an easy answer. Yeah. And there are also other attaches on there too. Um, like a lot of times fire alarm is on there um, as well. Sometimes um, in bigger communities, you'll have like a third party fiber that'll be on there. Yeah. So um, if, if I might summarize, um, you know, Fred asked this in terms of who's responsible for following up. That sounds like nobody's responsible for following up unless we give our overworked public servants an extra job to do to follow up on all of these things. So you're basically saying, well, Eversource, when we're done, we hand it off to Comcast. It's not our fault to, that all we have to do they get notified if they don't respond to the notification too damn bad it's the towns that have to follow up so we have a system where if people or companies decide they're not going to follow up on these things they're going to slow walk whatever um that it's on us um you know small towns with really small staffs um that are already overworked and i would really rather have my town administrator writing grants to get community development and economic development than having to follow up on 19 double polls in our town that have been here for something like a year. So I, I, just, I haven't checked the data now. on them. I, I'm not sure. Um, I you're would saying have to when really... you, Ellen, you're saying when you get a notification, you act on it. And Nick, you say when you put in that second poll and cut off the top and whatever else you have to do, you put the notification to the next person and then that's the end of your responsibility and ellen same for you your responsibility is when you get a notification to act on it but uh if there's a person in between nobody's responsible for poking them and saying hey you haven't responded with a certain amount of time right I and mean, that's what i'm understanding about the system each and, utility uh, is my, responsible yeah. for themselves yes yeah so, so it, it, and my question was going to be at the beginning, um, because I think at one point Nick said something like, how, you know, would you like to talk about how to solve this? It, I would love to talk about how to solve this. I don't really see how that's gonna happen unless we also have Comcast here. <laughs> so, uh, but, it, but it, again, it, 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 it tends to be incumbent on the town then to do all of this um, follow-up. And that's the part that I, I guess I, I wanted to vent a little bit about because uh, I, I, these people already have so much to do and do a great job and uh, following up on somebody else not doing their job is really, um, I don't know, they're, 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 that part of the system sucks. There's no like, you got to respond within 30 days. There's none of that in there apparently. Well, I don't know. I would have to go back in and check. I can do that tomorrow. Um, okay. Check on how long the polls have been out there. I can actually send you the double poll report if you'd like. Um, okay. So you can have a better look at it. Okay. That would be great. Okay. Maybe this question for Brian. What authority does the town have to say that they can't start any new work until these say double polls are, are removed? Or, or new locations for double poles are done within 
60 days or, or, or 90 days or whatever. Do we have any any leverage on that? Uh, I actually don't know the answer to that. For that's, that's a legal question that involves a lot of different layers um, in terms of the rights of public utilities versus municipalities. Um, so that's a hard question to answer right now. Okay. And I guess the, you know, the, the other impact on, on the town, uh, other than, I guess, well, positive, the benefits of Yankee Candle, but the impact is, is I, I think you, you need police duty at all these locations. So, so our police are involved and yes, they're compensated for it, but there, there's still that activity to, to coordinate and, and get police involved. And many of these locations also are among town water and, and uh, gas, natural gas lines running very close to your location. So, so I don't know if them uh, utility, town utilities are gonna be notified anytime you change your location. Well, put in a new poll. I know it's it's next to the, the existing poll, but uh, yeah. and I don't know how close these others are. But but it, it could impact other other things in town that, that you're not even aware of, uh, other than the police duty, I guess. But yeah, if, if we're if it's moving to a different location, I mean, we dig safe. I mean, that's that's yeah. that's the law. Um, and you know, we dig safe because we certainly want people dig safe when they're around. And we have utilities that are underground as well at times. Okay, so I guess Nick, can can I ask for for either EverSource or or, or I don't know, or Alan or, or Verizon to, to to get together and, and and tell us when you plan on on starting this project and and if there's some kind of if you know some kind of schedule, I mean, you're going to start from Yankee Candle and move outward, or are you doing the outskirts first and Christian Lane to Yankee Candle last? I mean, is there some kind of schedule, at least so we know what's happening where and when? Is, is that, is that, well, I, I guess I'd like to see something like that. And, and maybe tell us the contacts. If we have concerns, I, I don't know, Brian, if we know all the, the contacts for, for, for the three utilities uh, that are involved, if we see something that, that needs to be uh, corrected soon or, or we're not pleased because it's going on for a year, who do we contact? I don't know. Uh, it, we can get, I mean, we could get that contact information and we can have it on file for whenever we need to contact them. Right. I, 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 mean, I have to just say, I just want to say, I've for 14 years, I've been handling a municipality, every storm and whatnot, I send out you know, an information thing with, with numbers and my contact information, and, and that hasn't changed. And, and just, you know, for this, whenever there's a project like that, for example, in your municipality, when we have a set, we'll get a request from Eversource if they need poles upgraded, which sounds like they do. So we will act on those um, replacements. But as far as this, this upgrade project they're doing, that's basically the extent of ours, of our work on this. But um, my contact information has not changed and it's in with the town. And again, I, I, you can contact me at any time on any issue to do with Verizon. I, I wanna back up um, a little bit. The idea of, of a schedule is, is a good one. <clears throat> and I'm sure it exists because you guys are a smart company. Everyone has these schedules. Um, but what I think should be added to the schedule and, and, and I know I would like to see at least the start of taking down the current double poles before we create more double poles. Um, because we all know on our to-do lists every day, if you don't cross off a couple of things on your to-do list, the 10 new ones sort of sort of mess up the, 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 the plan to, 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 to check the box on the two ones you were gonna do. We've got to see a plan where the the pole, the double poles that currently exist, what the plan is to remove those simultaneous to seeing the plan for the creation of more cleanup afterwards. I am more than confident you guys are going to do a great job putting up the new poles, making sure 
that everyone has the, the electricity that they need and deserve and, and, and that customers are satisfied from a, from a delivery perspective. Um, I, I wanna see a, a, a plan for the follow-up. I, I don't, I don't wanna just see a plan for this is how we're gonna move forward. I wanna see how we're gonna backtrack to make sure that the double poles that do exist. And I don't care who's responsible for it. The, the, the three utilities should get together and say, okay, you're responsible for X, you're responsible for Y, you're responsible for Z. And what's the plan to get rid of these so that we're not just mounting up tasks after tasks after tasks? Okay, and, and I guess I'd just like to add something that, you know, the, the, the town is, is, has been working with, I guess, Eversource for the past year or two on the location of these uh, uh, regulators that are on platforms. You've come to us for locations we reviewed them. We, we've taken our time and effort. Our, our different departments have looked at them and found the best location. We worked with you to get the best location that's not uh, aesthetic. That's not detriment, detrimental for aesthetics to to the to the neighborhood or is is affecting uh, building lots, future building lots. We worked with you. We've helped you and, and you've listened to us, to, to, to our concerns. I, I guess we, we appreciate that, uh, all these regulators that or platforms that, that are in town. I, I guess we'd like to see the communication go back now. Tell us more specifically what you're doing, when you're gonna do it. I'd like to just interject to say that I'm familiar with just about every single one of these double sets. And at this point in time, it's Comcast that is the next one on the list. So until they are the one that comes to the table, it doesn't appear that anything's going to happen. Well, we know our government liaison for Comcast, don't we? <laughs> <So>. <laughs> yep. All right. That's good information. Thank you, Keith. And again, we don't mean to dump on you guys. We really don't. I just It, it just it gets frustrating when... And we, we admit, we, we believe that the small towns get left behind. I, at least I do. We're, we're, we're a lot less significant to most, to most utilities than larger utilities are. And that's just dollars and cents. Um, so we, we take this a little personally, or again, I do. So I just want to see it done. I want to see a plan for how this is going to get done. And, and I don't think that's a tall order to ask for personally. Okay, so... Can we see something in the next, what, 60 days, 30, 60 days? Nick, from you, some kind of plan? Can someone actually send out a, a copy of the of the double pull report from, what was it called, an Engine? And, and will, yeah, that show, send... will that show who's up? Yeah, I can send you a double pull report. Yeah, oh. like I, I had said, yeah, I'll send one out tomorrow. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, so get back to Nick. Can we see something within 60 days of what your plan is, what we're asking for? Uh, I'm going to redirect that one to uh, my supervisor, Aaron. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll we'll pull something together for you all and uh, work towards addressing these issues here. Yeah, I assume this will be before you start anything anything new. So. Okay. It'll be some time before any construction begins, regardless. We're still in a pretty preliminary phase. Um, but I think we can we can produce some documentation to you for um, scheduling. Um, you know, we can work with the other utilities to to work on those double poles. Um, obviously, before any new construction begins, this isn't going to be um, like I said, this is a preliminary stage for sure. So there's time. There's time to work with the town to address your concerns before we put any new poles in the ground. This isn't happening tomorrow. Okay. Any uh, any further discussion? Anybody? Can, can I ask a question? Are yeah. there any legal or contractual incentives or disincentives in place for utilities to get these things done quickly? Is there anything aside from their public liaison person not wanting to be nagged by Brian to get them to move? And I'm not blaming either of the utilities here or Comcast, but 
aside from just wa our wanting it done, is there anything legal to cause them to move more quickly? Not that I know. Of. I don't believe so. I mean, you could always, again, Fred, what when I had mentioned the regulatory authority of the PUC, you know, you can always go to the PUC, whether they listen or not is, is another matter, but that, you know, there is a regulatory body in Boston that you, you could have a, have a, have a, a meeting with. Um, I don't know whether that would do anything. That's the, probably the closest thing that exists to what your question is, is it, it's, it's administrative legality as opposed to you know, more, more, more Juris Doctor um, stuff. So, you know, that's always a possibility, but it, it would be the PUC that you would go to. And that would be a long process. So essentially the, it relies on our relationship and goodwill with the utilities that they want to get this done. Yeah. To, and, to maintain that relationship. And, and I would actually argue, and, and, and maybe this is something we need, need to do a better job of, especially since Yankee Candle is easily the biggest employer in Waitley is to, is, is to work with them so that they use their, 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 their sort of commercial presence um, as, as, a, as a large purchasing power um, of, of, of electricity to um, encourage the three utilities to work together to, to, um, to right size the, the cleanup. Uh, that yeah, well, I would, I would think that uh, Eversource has an incentive to move quickly to keep Yankee Candle a big user happy. In terms of the implementation, yes. In terms Not of the implementation, implementation, the initial right. implementation. Right. But I don't see what Comcast's incentive is after that to move quickly once Eversource has Yankee Candle happy. Right. Well, and, and that's why I say a, 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 a more proactive relationship between Waitley and Yankee Candle might might encourage Yankee Candle to include this in their in their ne initial negotiations for we're not just interested in the initial implementation but we're also interested in being good neighbors and making sure you guys um, clean up after the after the good work you guys do to to make sure that we're all getting the power we need. I, I think that's sort of my point and and it's a and and I'm glad you jogged my my thought on that. We need to do a better job um, leveraging Yankee Candle's buying power. Okay, I just I just want to know if there was anything legal that could be done aside from going to the PUC, which would take forever. Okay, okay. Uh, I think Brian responded to that a few minutes ago. So, uh, anything anything else on this subject? Um, this is this is this is Nick here. I just wanted to say something to foster some collaboration here. Um, here's what I propose. Um, three items, three action items. Number one, um, work with Verizon and Comcast to um, eliminate the new double poles before construction. Number two, um, produce a construction schedule um, to share with the select board. And item three would be to coordinate a cleanup response post-construction with the other utilities to ensure that it's done in a timely manner. I think if we can, if we can handle those three items, I think everyone will be happy. Yes. Nick is officially my new best friend. Yes, that would be very good, Nick. You could do that, so I think we appreciate that. So, and like I said before, there's 19 in there are none in my court right now. As soon as they're moved over, as they have been in the database, we will go out and take care of them. So, okay. I'm not, you know, we as we have. We will continue to go out immediately if something gets in our court and remove that double pull when it gets over to us. Okay. So, um, uh, you know, I just want to say that as, as that first bullet that um, for us handling the double pulls when they get in my court, that's not a problem and it won't be a problem. Okay. It hasn't been and it won't be. Right. So it sounds like we need to, you know, reach out to Comcast specifically and, um, you know, really push them to get these moving. Um, as a condition for this construction project, which I think is fair. You know what, it might be better, uh, you know, Nick, I think because um, they're in the position where too, where they, they use vendors, right? They'll use vendors um, maybe to move the, the ones that are sitting in your court right now, move those over, and then we can throw the whole list over at Comcast 
and say, here you go, take care of them. And then I can have all 19 at the same time. And then I can blitz it. Yeah, I think that's a- That it's might be the best way to handle it. I think because that's when they do get pressure, they'll do that. They'll just get a bunch of, you know, they'll hire a bunch of vendors and they'll go in and take care of them all at once. That might be the best way to get it done as quickly as possible for the town. Okay, that sounds good. Good approach to do that. Appreciate it and hope you follow up and, and hope to hear hear and see more information of the plan, whatever, in the next uh, next month or two here. So whatever you, you want to share with us to schedule or lists or, uh, or when activities are going to occur, please send them to Brian, our town administrator, and he'll share that with, with other departments in town. So. Okay. Thanks so much, you guys. Brian, I got your email. I'll send that over to you tomorrow morning. All right, thank you. Yep. Okay. Uh, one thank quick you. question. Uh, it's either Nick or Aaron. Who Who's the Eversource contact that, that we should be in touch with? You can reach out to me if you'd like. Okay. Okay, moving on our, on our agenda. All right, thank you for your time. Take care. Have a great night, everybody. Take care, everyone. Good night. Good night. Okay, next, uh, COVID-19 uh, state emergency activities here. Brian, you've got a few things that you're proposing to, to change in our current uh, resolutions here. Do you want to what, put them on the screen? Yeah. All right, so there's the first one. Um, this is a long time coming, I guess, right? Um, so this would be this would be an order uh, de declaring an end to the declaring an end to the local COVID nineteen emergency declaration that the board passed in March thirteenth, twenty twenty. So the last reported case in town was um, April twenty seventh, twenty twenty one. Um, case numbers across the state are are going down. Uh, vaccines are readily available, and the Commonwealth's um, state of emergency is scheduled to end June fifteenth. So I wanted to uh, check with the board to see if it thought it was time to end the local uh, emergency declaration for COVID nineteen. Wouldn't we want to end it on the same day as? The, I mean, if we choose to end it at all, wouldn't we want it to coincide with the end of the state's declaration? I don't think they're. I don't think there needs to be. I don't see a reason why it needs to be that way. Okay. I mean, why not? I'm just curious. Okay. Why I don't see it needs to be that way? Yeah. Um, I think the conditions here locally are different than, than across the state. Okay. I mean, we could have it whatever whatever date you want. I, I mean, my opinion is I, I don't know that the the circumstances just justify keeping it. Okay. Okay. So you want us to act on each one, or you want us to act at the end of, on all of them? No, I, I think you could act on each one, and we could have. I, I think it, we're gonna. I think we'll have some discussions. So, I'll, I'll make a motion to to end the um, emergency declaration order that began on March thirteenth, twenty twenty, effective immediately. Okay, I'll second it. Okay, we'll call vote, Jonathan. Yep. Joyce, Joyce with us? Aye. Fred, yes. Okay. All right, thank you. And a huge, it goes without uh, saying a huge thanks to the Board of Health, right? All right. Um, second suggestion here is that we reopen town buildings to the public. Um, so I reached out, speaking of the Board of Health, I reached out to the Board of Health and, and wanted to get their take on, on doing this. Uh, they were in favor of it. The only suggestion that they had was that, and it's number two here, that we, that the, 
the town still require face coverings um, when a person is inside and they cannot maintain six feet of distance between another person from a different household. Um, I asked if, if if the Board of Health had a, an opinion as whether we should, uh, uh, whether it should depend on someone's vaccinated or unvaccinated. And uh, the response that I received was that it's, in their opinion, it's better to have it just apply across the board at this point. Um, I had a question about that um, number two there, um, because I think most people coming in to the town office doing business would come to the window and the window has plexiglass there and yep. you technically would be within six feet of uh, presumably it's Lynn or uh, another person acting as town clerk on the other side maybe um, there uh, is that a case where a mask could be required that that like that particular case seems like it's going to come up and it wasn't clear to me whether it's covered here just because there's the plexiglass. And I don't know. I mean, it, it should be should mean then you have to mask up to be in front of the plexiglass. Um, yeah, it does. And I, I did not think about that. Um, yeah, I didn't think of it earlier when you sent this out either. But. Yeah. Uh, as it's written now, yes, it would it would it would be required to wear a mask. Um, yeah. And and do you think that is the intention then? Um, if we're going to amend it, this would be a time to amend it before it's approved. Right. Uh, but will the plexiglass remain? Um, I think it should for the, for the uh, at least for the time being, I, I would hope. Mm -hmm. I, I, I guess my comment, and it, and it bleeds into number three, I guess, a little bit. And, and, and Brian, not to pick on you, but you know, we talked about how our situation is different out here than it is the rest of the state. And so we should, you know, we, we can lift the restriction before the rest of the state, but then we're seemingly a little bit more strict than a lot of the state. If, if you can pack the Boston Garden, again, with 17,000 people spitting on each other, why do you need this? Why, why do we need to wear, and, and, I'm, and I'm just bringing up conversation, why do we need to wear masks in a meeting of seven people if the rest of the states allowing the Boston Garden in a more urban area where there's a, a higher propensity for, for COVID historically um, to, to, to gather together and not wear masks, certainly less than six feet apart? Why the, why the, the difference? Um. Uh, I understand. I understand your point. Um, I think it's. I think it's different risk tolerances. Um, this is. This was the recommendation from the Board of Health. Um, I don't know exactly what's driving it. Um, I think it's. It. I think they're trying. If they're going to err, I think they're trying to err on the side of caution. Um, but I understand your point. I, I also would, would would make the point. And again, I, I, I think I've been a pretty cautious guy on all this all along, but if, if we ask people to trust the science about mask coverings, et cetera, throughout the pandemic, we, we should also be trusting science in the cold. You know what, if you're vaccinated, you're in good shape. And if, if, if we require more than what the CDC is recommending, then are we sending a signal and I don't know the answer to this. I'm just asking, are we sending a signal that we don't trust the science? Because I trust the science. I, I, and it's hard for me in this case because I, I, I don't want to get this thing. I don't want my neighbors to get this thing. I don't want my kids to get this thing. But My understanding though, John, is that the CDC is recommending in indoor situations when you can't maintain a social distance that people be masked. That's even if you're vaccinated. But what if we... And this change the word from shall be worn to uh, encouraged or something like something like that, where it's not a mandate. It's only you're encouraged if you feel more comfortable wearing a mask or not. Will that, will that help solve our dilemma here? 
I Again, I'm not, I, I don't know what I what I believe. I, I'm just saying that I, I just want to make sure that we're un uncovering all the stones that we need to uncover in the conversation. Yeah. I mean, I think number two is probably a good idea for in-person meetings. People can not wear a mask if they're willing to put their chairs six feet apart. I don't have any trouble with that if people want to be closer together. And that I, because I think that is consistent with um, with the science, um, as John would put it. Um, the whole, uh, I I don't know if it's I I don't I don't know if I uh, agree with your characterization of the single pack on each other. Um, I don't know enough details about that. You, hey Joyce, um, you, broke, you broke up there. What did you say? I'm sorry. Uh, I just don't. I, I don't know if a comparison should be to the Boston Garden because I don't really know that it's packed to the gills with people spitting on each other. Um, I think that might be a little hyperbole. So it's certainly packed to the gills. I mean, it's certainly packed. I mean, it's they're they're neck they're next to each other in seats. Um, if they're vaccinated, my understanding is people who are not vaccinated are in a section. That's separate, or maybe I'm mixing that with a, a, a different sport story. <clears throat> but I, I, I don't I, I don't think that's necessarily a relevant um, a relevant thing to for comparison here. Okay. Well, I think we're we're talking more more than just attending or having town meetings. I mean, what about people going to the library or uh, or the historical society? It's in a town building or or an event in the town hall. Are we saying by this that they all shall wear a mask unless six feet distance? Yeah, yeah exactly. So if Paul wants to have a concert at the town hall, you would have to agree that people who are sitting close together have to wear masks. But yeah, Jonathan's example of Boston Garden, you could sit next to each other. Right. I understand, but we're not running the Boston Garden, and nobody said that the Boston Garden was uh, complying with CDC recommendations. Here, I think what is written is in line with recommendations, and if they get loosened further, then we can come back and revisit it, but um, I, I guess I'm comfortable with these, except that I sort of, I, I see that the when there's a piece of plexiglass between you, maybe that's an, uh, that's an exception. I maybe mean, that's a place we should be flexible, but I don't have any problem saying if you're gonna be in town buildings and you know, you're not with someone from your own household, then yeah, wear a mask. It, it seems pretty conservative. It means you don't, don't have to wear one if you're not gonna be closer than six feet. I, 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 guess, I guess I'm okay with, with that. I, I, I... I, but I would like to add that we should revisit this thing once a month. Right. Um, okay. I, I don't want this to, to just drag on for, forever unless there's a reason for it to drag on forever. Yeah, and, and I got the sense in the, in the email from Fran that, that, that the, the guidance is evolving and it's evolving quickly and that this was a recommendation when he sent it with the expectation that if, if things keep improving, it, then restrictions would... The recommendations would change, but at the end of the day, we're regardless. People are going to write. We're people are going to do what they're going to do. Um, so, at, at some point, we're relying on people's uh, whatever you want to call it willingness to uh, willingness to comply. I guess. Move on, Brian. What's after three? After three or three? After three, what's the next page? Well, we can talk about three, I guess. Yeah, yeah, that's gonna be a larger conversation I, I'd like to have. Um, four is transfer station. Uh, you know, there's still the COVID-19 protocols, Hurley Field, um, it's outdoors. It's, I believe it's just gonna, it would just be the regular use policies. Is um, number four deliberately vague? Yes. There are COVID-19 protocols that the Solid Waste Committee has that they've oh, had okay. all along. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. So it's just, it's somebody else's 
decision about those protocols. Okay. Yep. And on the website. Um, so for opening town buildings, we'll get back to three in that this also uh, brings up the, the meeting guidance is um, in-person meetings. And what, you know, what is the town, what does the board want to want to do with these? Um, as of right now, absent any legislation being passed, um, the authority to hold entirely remote meetings goes away June 15th. Um, there's legislation that that has been introduced that will at least extend the authority to have entirely remote meetings um, until September 1st as a stopgap measure. Um, that's sort of the, the fail safe unless the legislature uh, passes something in the next 13 days. Um, but that doesn't mean you, you can't have entirely in-person meetings. Um, and it doesn't mean that, that your meetings have to be remote. So we're kind of trying to figure out what's next in terms of meetings. Um, it's been, I, it, this is my opinion. It's been nice from a, it's been nice from a, a, a transparency point of view that we have more meetings recorded and we have, um, it, 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 the meetings are, are more, more accessible. doesn't mean that we had more people attending, um, but we have recordings and we're able to post those, whereas we typically don't have most of those meetings recorded um, because we rely on FCAT, who has very limited staff um, to record those meetings. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I guess, so, so there's, there's three choices. Uh, I guess the town buildings could stay closed for meetings and everything stays remote or the town buildings could open wide up and it could be just in-person meetings, or there could be a hybrid where um, it's an in-person meeting with um, remote participation allowed. That first one though might not be allowed by law after the 15th. Correct. Yeah. I mean, we all signs indicate that it's going to, at least the stopgap measure is going to pass, but there's no guarantee. I, I also am dubious that a hybrid model really works because the person who is on, you know, we all know that when we call into a meeting and the majority of the people are in person and then you're, you're the one person on a conference call, you're not heard. And it's not the fault of the people in, in, that are live in the meeting. It's just, you're not heard. Um, I would disagree. I spent uh, about six months being the one remote participant in our um, and on our select board, and I certainly felt like I was heard. No, I meant, but Joyce, you're a member of the select board. I'm saying, I'm saying, if a, if a random person wants to, um, want wants to get involved in a meeting, I I think by definition it is harder for that person. You you were heard because because we know you're there, and 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 there's a there's a there's a slot for your input. Um, but I, again, I'm just using, you know. 40 years of or 35 years of, of, of occasionally being on a conference you know, on a, on a meeting from, from my phone or whatever. And, and, and the, the conversation takes place with the people in the room. The conversation oftentimes is, is not uh, involving the people that are, that are on the phone. Well, that's a matter of audio at this point, right? Um, and if, if we continue to have, at least one person with a computer with Zoom in the room, then I don't see why we can't have people, either board members or public, being able to participate by Zoom. I, I think it's not that much work to do, and it's not a lot to ask. Yeah, We're looking into technology to make it easier. We actually just got back the the um, the plans from Wasman today. I haven't had a chance to look at them as uh, and and. I haven't looked at the price tag yet, of course, because I wanted to be sitting down for that part. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, 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 I just think we've gotten, um, I, I think that's been the one silver lining is I think our meetings are more, much more inclusive. I really like that it's not as big a burden to ask Keith to come to a meeting if he can just zoom in from home. Uh, it's not as big a burden on anybody that we ask to come see us 
if they can if they can participate remotely. And I, so I think that's really important that we try our best to keep that moving forward. I would love it if that it would extend to all the board members so that you don't have to have a quorum in person. Um, but that's, you know, that's that may or may not happen. It's not in my hands. Um, I have certainly lobbied our legislative representatives on this and I'll lobby anybody else who will listen to me. Um, but I, 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 you know, it, it, Brian, why should he have to stay late in Waitley all those nights? It was, it, I think it would be a really nice thing for our employees as well to be able to participate um, by Zoom. And we're actually getting pretty good at this. Well, I, Joyce, don't get me wrong. I think that we should stay Zoom anyway because you're just as efficient. Well. I'm not sure where it's efficient, but but it's 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 a lot. It's 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 just right. There are a lot of benefits to it. I just my point is the hybrid piece, and I just think human nature is human nature. So it would be my vote to remain on Zoom for as long as we can. But if we can't, I I just struggle with the hybrid piece. Can can we continue the way we have on Zoom until we we hear back from I guess what Brian and Joyce of, of the the hybrid model or hybrid information you got from Wasman to see whether that's acceptable or possible to implement it's probably not going to be implementable by June 15th even if we were to decide tomorrow um, I don't think we can necessarily decide and approve that expenditure tomorrow, but I don't think it would be in by the 15th. And the 15th is the day when we might lose the legal ability to hold meetings by 100% Zoom. Can I raise one uh, just scenario of a hybrid meeting? If you have a contentious public hearing a Zoom hybrid meeting could be very difficult to manage of having people wanting to speak on Zoom and in the room and trying to juggle that dynamic. That, that's sort of my point. Well, well I think we, may, we do that all the time though. When we have a contentious public hearing, the person who's running it says, you know, reads the riot act at the beginning, they call on people, the chair is in charge meeting. Uh, and then people who are coming by Zoom get their chance to talk as well as people in the room. I think that's, um, I, I don't think we have meetings that are unmanageably contentious. I think when we do have contentious meetings, everybody gets to say their, their part. I don't think, I, I think we could, I think we can manage hybrid if we have to. I surely think it is easier if it's 100% Zoom or 100% in person, but we, we may not, we have to have some way of dealing with the eventuality that maybe this stopgap measure is not going to pass by the 15th and we need to do something about any meeting that is on the 16th or later, or maybe the 15th or later, depending on how that was worded. But I, I guess I, I don't see a problem with contentious meetings because I've been involved in a few here uh, with some issues in town where there's been 15 or 20 people on and everybody is is usually uh, able to, to speak their piece and make comments. And even the ones that didn't have computer access, there was provisions to allow them to go somewhere else so they could participate. Uh, contentious meetings to me, to me I, I didn't see that Zoom as, as, a, as an issue or concern. These people spoke, uh, their piece, uh, of course, it was all recorded and everybody could see it afterwards. So I, I guess I've experienced it and don't see it as a problem. I no, it's, seen it so Fred, far. Fred, I think it's it's the, again, it's the hybrid piece that, that's the problem. It's, it's If it's just Zoom, yeah, that's easy. Yeah. Um, but if it's hybrid, um, the, the person on the Zoom is gonna have certainly a, a, a tougher time following the conversation potentially. Um, we'll have to make provisions for the person saying, oh, I didn't hear the last three minutes. And it just gets, or be, because of the cacophony in the room. Um, I, 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 I just struggle with the hybrid piece on, on 
a, a number of levels because human nature is human nature. And, and it's going to be, if, if you have a lot of people talking at the same time, it is, it is going to be difficult for the person or persons on a Zoom to, to follow along. And it's difficult for the people in the room to follow along when a lot of people are talking at once. That's why it's important for the person running the meeting to let people talk in order and make them talk in order. Um, and, and I, I, I don't think it's a, just because it might be hard in some one situation doesn't mean we shouldn't try something hybrid because it works in so many others. You know, you're saying just, oh, this doesn't work in this one case, so we can't try it. Well, I, you know, I, I don't think we have that many contentious meetings where people are talking over each other in person. And, and I think it's worth trying. Absolutely worth trying. We, we had so much more participation in our meetings um, in, in this last year. And, and it was easy. You know, all, all these meetings where we really need the Board of Health to be there every time. Well, if the Board of Health had to be in person, that would have been really a, a big burden on them, but it makes the burden on people coming to see us smaller. And if we can make that burden smaller, more people will come to see us. I'm wondering if I can, if I could rephrase what, what, what three is saying here. And, and I wonder if, if we're willing to, um, say that the town office building is available for, for in-person meetings or and let the boards and committees that are, that are meeting decide if they want to do totally in-person or hybrid in-person remote public meetings, um, obviously subject to the face cover requirement, but, but really the only way that we can provide a, a hybrid meeting would be in the large conference room. Um, so I don't know if that's something we want to consider. Is it, it let the, the the different boards and committees decide whether for this meeting it makes sense to be in person or 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 hybrid or remote or or obviously they could be all remote. Um, but Maybe this really relates to the town buildings. They might not be able to be all remote, right? So point where they may not be able to do all remote after June fifteenth. So boards will not have the power to decide. Well, they would not have that. You, that's correct. Remote subject to extended authorization, legislative authorization. It would have to read something like that. Um, but I, they, they can still record a meeting if they're in person, right? I think. I yes. Know, yeah. I know that's the other policy, but so you're just really trying to get us going on this one policy. So sorry, I keep going to the other one. <laughs> well, it's intertwined because it references it. Why, why are you saying just a large conference room? Because there's meetings being held, or were being held, say, in the library and the town hall, uh, or that don't have the capability, I guess, of our conference room for recordings and video and whatever. So yep, that's be allowed? If they can figure out how to do it, they can. I, I mean, I, I thought about it and I think there's a way that it works in the large conference room. If, for instance, the library trustees can figure out how to do it in their, wherever they meet in the, in the room downstairs, then super. Okay. But I, I, I mean, I, I guess what, what I, what I like is, 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 is we've just had a lot more transparency. We've had a lot more meetings recorded. Um, yeah. And, I, and we've even had people ask um, about, hey, do you have the planning board recording of the meeting? Because we weren't able to make the meeting in the past. The answer was no. Um, so it, it's been good in it's been good in that respect. Um, so if if we get new video equipment or, or whatever your or audio visual equipment. Will we be able to record the meetings like FCAT is and make them available to people online from our, say, website whenever they want? Is that what we're looking at? We're it, it, doing? It, yes, the, the system we're looking at would record. It would, uh, the cameras would automatically go to the speaker. Um, it would provide a place for um, uh, projecting uh, if you had to. Uh, 
uh, if you had a PowerPoint to project. Uh, if not, it would be the, the face of the person um, who might be speaking remotely or something like that. Um, yes, and then recording what happened in, in Zoom the way it does now. Okay, so should we leave this the way it is and, and wait to hear back at the end of the month, uh, whether the, we have the technical capabilities to, to do this, to do hybrid? Well, we have the technical capabilities to do hybrid. I mean, that's not. Well, yeah, we have that now. Uh, what we were planning to, uh, thinking of buying from Wasman would make it easier. Easier. But yeah, we already have the technology now. We, we have tried it out. We used it when I was in Stockholm and it works. When's the next meeting scheduled? End of the month, I think. 30th. Yeah, 30th, I, I think. I am hearing requests from, from boards and committees as to whether they can meet in person. Um, it, and I, I think the, the, the thinking goes that, well, the, if the town building's completely open, then why can't I, I think uh, personally, we, we would we would leave it up to individual boards and if they can figure it out they can figure it out but I think they should yeah. figure it out without burdening Amy and Brian and other town hall staff to figure it out they're going to figure it out they got to figure it out on their own in terms of six foot distancing et, et, et cetera in in a meeting um personally I would leave it up to individual boards and and I would say for for our little club here um I, I think that we should tentatively plan on being on Zoom uh, for the last meeting of the month and unless and, and um, legal authority does not allow it. Okay. Um, yeah, it's the other policy though that will have the recording part in it, right? So if, I think I don't think three has to have its wording changed to accommodate what John just said. Oh, okay. So we need to take an action on that, Brian. We'll come back to we'll come back to that for a second. Okay. I I, I mean it almost feels like I need to amend a lot of these to say if we're gonna get if we're gonna leave it up to the boards and committees to say may resume in fully in-person meetings, hybrid in-person remote meetings, and entirely remote meetings, and then parentheses after June 15th if legislative authorization is adopted. I, I, I think that's, I mean, I, I'd hate to put more work on Brian, but I think that's, that's my sentiment at least, but I'm not gonna fall on my sword on either. Okay, I guess that sounds fine to me. Uh, that, that, yeah, I'm reading the three, the ABC here. And if we um, approve this, then basically it means, yes, you can have in-person meetings, but you have to allow Zoom participation. Right. Participation has its ups and downs. They can uh, come or not, but they have to be. Uh, they have to, has to be available, and you have to use Zoom to record it, so we can continue to have the transparency that we've come to. Uh, we've come to love, and, and we revisit it every thirty days. Okay, that's fine with me. Uh, so, so are is the board fine with? And I think the answer is no. But based on what Joyce just said, but in person meetings that that have no Zoom component, I would be against that. I, I would be fine with it personally, but well, no. Let me let me rephrase that. I, I don't think we should leave. I think whether we, we allow hybrid or not is, I think that's leaving a little, a little too open-ended um, and nebulous. We're either going to allow hybrid or not. Um, 
Yeah, I, th I think we allow hybrid. And what that means is spelled out in the ABC here. It just means that if you're going to have an in-person meeting, you have to schedule it on Zoom. You have to allow people to participate by Zoom. And you have to record it. That's what hybrid means in this situation, I think. That's what, I mean, does that, that's what I, that's how I read this anyway. Uh, you mean the permanent laptop is set up in, I, I mean, the, the challenge is, is that let, let's use the, the, the library trustees as the example. I don't know whether any of the library trustees have a laptop or not. Let's assume for the sake of argument, they do not have a laptop. That means that so that somehow they have to get a computer down to the meeting room in the library for a hybrid scenario to work. And I certainly don't want to ask Brian or Amy to provide that function, nor should we, you know, we, if you don't have a laptop, it makes hybrid very difficult. Yeah, but then you wouldn't be able to meet by Zoom remotely either. So I'm pretty sure there's going to be somebody among the library trustees who's got a laptop that could do this. I, I, I'm just saying if they don't, or if, you know, we don't know, that's the, that's, it's an unknown joke. I, I, I'm pretty sure that somebody on the library trustees has a computer. In fact, the libraries have computers. So laptops or they have desktops? It doesn't, it, you can do Zoom from a desktop. I understand that, but, <laughs> but is there a desktop that, is, that sits in the meeting room? And if not, that means you have to move the the, the tower, the the screen, the. They're they're they're. I, I don't think this is an onerous requirement. Well, I I. I, I think that's. I I assume that we're going to have some type of town laptop set up in the large conference room of of, of town hall. I guess my point is if. if you really want to try the hybrid model, it should be done from the large conference room because I don't think we can afford the luxury of, of the chance that someone might not have access to a laptop. As again, as volunteer boards, as we don't we don't know. And unless we can guarantee it, unless unless we can we can take those steps. If you want to have a hybrid, have an in-person meeting and it's going to be hybrid. It's got to be from the large conference room. Otherwise, do it Zoom. I just don't think we, we can take we can take that risk. Which of the three things on this policy do you object to? Can you make it bigger, Brian? Yep. I think B, I don't object necessarily to anything, any of them. I think B and C could be logistically difficult. It's not a mess, it's not a question of, of objecting. It's if it's 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 if the agriculture committee, I don't care who it is. They can do it. They were the test case for doing meetings by Zoom. They have laptops, they can do it, they've done it, they've proven they can do it. Uh, but can you say that definitively across every committee in town? I don't know. I think any committee that has been meeting in the they're, last they're year. They're home. They're home. So you think none of those are laptops? I don't know. I, I don't. Oh, you don't know. So my, my intention would be that there would be a dedicated laptop in the large conference room. And if there's a group that doesn't have a laptop that they could do this at their normal meeting place, then they can come to the big room. That was just the point, the point that I made. Well, if, then you don't really object to these, then it sounds like. You, but they, it cannot be in a room other than the main, meet, the large conference room in the town offices. If you, that's my point. Okay, I don't think we should require that they use the, the main room in the town office. That should not be a requirement. That should be a room that is available. But if the library trustees, somehow somebody on the library trustees have to, they do all of the things that are said here without using the, the main room. 
and you're okay with not everyone being on, are you going to set the laptop up so that it pans the entire group? Just set it back. I, I've done that with family phone calls. That you can, you can have more than one person on a screen. Um, I, I, I don't think we need to mandate that people use the big room at for Sandy Lane. But I think we can, uh, what I think we should do is what's written here in this policy, which means if we, can, we will certainly provide it in the main room at Sandy Lane, but many people have the means to do it otherwise. And in fact, if everybody at the meeting has their laptop, they can all be in, can be in person and on Zoom at the same time. Whatever. I don't. I don't care. But the 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 crux of all this was Brian. I guess is being asked for boards and committees to meet in a building because we're opening them up to the public to have meetings in the, in the town buildings, and and I, I guess we're saying that's okay as long as you record it on Zoom. You and if you don't have Zoom or don't know how to use Zoom or don't want to use Zoom, then I, then I guess you can't have an in-person meeting. You got to go back to the the way we're doing it today. Zoom for everybody. No, Fred, I think you're misunderstanding that. If you want to have an in-person meeting, you just have to have the have it available to people on Zoom as well. Okay? That's what it's saying. It's not saying if you don't want to use Zoom, then you have to use Zoom. That, that doesn't make any sense. We sure. might not have the ability to have uh, to have 100% uh, Zoom meetings anymore. That may not be an option. It's an option until June 15th. Might be an option until September 1st. Who knows after that, because the legislature has to agree on something and we know how that takes a lot of time. Okay, so the whole reason for having this is because we might have to have a quorum of a board in person in order to hold a public meeting. This is all about making an in-person meeting a little bit more transparent, a little bit more accessible to people by including an option to use Zoom. People who have to use it, they could come in person. <laughs> okay. That, I mean, we, we were trying to prepare for that eventuality and it might be in two weeks. It might be the 15th that we have to deal with this. So we need something in place now so that when the 15th comes and maybe the legislature acts, maybe they don't, we've got something in place. Okay. That, that's the thing I think we should focus on. Okay. And if we want to continue Zoom meetings after the 15th, regardless of what the state says, are you saying we can't do that? No, we can't we do it. It is entirely up to the state. If the state says no, not in your life, then we are in person. Yeah. And, we, and the current remote meeting law allows board members to join a meeting remotely, but a quorum, including the chair, has to be in person. Okay. That's the only law that's in place that that's allowing there. There's all kinds of people saying, oh, we're going to take a look at that. We're going to modernize. It. We're going to update it. Um, but you don't have to let the public into your meeting. You don't have to record every meeting. But we've seen some benefits from that. So I think right now, while everybody still remembers all their Zoom skills, if we ask boards to continue, to allow access with Zoom and to record it with Zoom, which is pretty easy. People know how to do it. I don't think we're it's it's onerous. And if there's an exception here or there where people have trouble with it, then let's talk. I think that that's something that we can probably handle on a case by case basis. But I, I feel like we've discussed this way more than we need to. Well, but, uh, well, I have two responses. We're, we're not in agreement, Joyce. So 
discussion isn't a bad thing. We don't agree. It's a civil conversation. Well, what's the part we don't agree on? Whether I, 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 I think I've said enough. I okay. So you you don't want them to be required to record a meeting. I I want them. Like you said, you didn't disagree with A, B, or C, so I don't see where we have a real You agreement. know what? Make a motion. <laughs> so, I, oh, this isn't my screen, so I can't scroll it up and down. Whatever we decide on today could change on June 15th, right? Or at our next meeting. Or our next meeting, yeah. Yeah. So can can we leave what being proposed here effective until June fifteenth? We're meeting. No, June. no. This is all in because things might change on June fifteenth. Okay. So you wouldn't want it to end June fifteenth. You want it to be able to go further. Okay. So. So I guess, so I guess, well, let me, let me phrase it differently. Um, everybody's okay with boards and committees that elect to hold entirely remote meetings through June 15th and beyond June 15th, so long as the legislature extends that. Everybody agrees on that, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. What about in, um, entirely in-person meetings with no remote participation? Is that recorded? Um, well, let's start, let's, let's go to the extreme, no. Then I would not be in favor of that. I I agree. I think things should be recorded. If that means they have to be at Four Sandy Lane, so be it. Recorded audio. Uh, I mean, we're gonna have problems with with, with with video right away. I think in terms of if we need to space people out six feet and right. That's my point. And 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 audio isn't. It, it's not the intent. It's 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 the entire visual audio experience. That's the point I'm making. It's gonna be hard. The video part will be hard before we have appropriate video equipment. Yes. And again, that means that you can only really do it from Four Sandy Lane. You can't do it from the library. You can't unless all meeting facilities are going to be equipped with that type of audio visual technology uh, unless somebody has unless they bring their own for instance right unless if everyone is on camera i mean sure but but you know you're gonna have to span the room and it's it well, i mean that's what we did when i was in stockholm that on camera had the whole room out there i, I could hear everybody in the room wasn't it wasn't a problem it wasn't as big a problem as i think you expect it to be but 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 joyce we're, we're talking about abiding by open meeting laws and and you being in stockholm wasn't about open meeting laws it's open meeting th this is around people feeling like they are part of the dialogue and the meeting if they are remote and if they don't feel like they are a part of the dialogue because they couldn't see everyone, because cameras, because microphones were too far, whatever it is, they are going to say we are in, in um, conflict with the open meeting law. That's my concern. And again, I don't like the open meeting law. I think it's silly, but it's the law. 
Well, I think if we make every attempt to have a meeting recorded for transparency and available via Zoom so that you don't have to travel or be six feet from somebody if you're not vaccinated, then I, I think that's actually doing better than open meeting law, not worse. I think it should be visual. I, I think we, if you've got Zoom, then visual is, is it's no more difficult than audio. Again, I promised I would stop talking. So I, 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 I think it's harder than, 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 than you're making it out to be Joyce. And, and, you know, and I don't mind disagreeing. It's, it's a wonderful thing. It just, we, I, I think it's going to be tougher than it is. So if you want to take it for a test drive, see how it works. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, we can revisit it. Okay, Brian, bring us back here. What are we doing? Um, so we're good with remote. Everybody's fine with continuing with remote as long as the legislature allows us to do it. Um, it seemed like both Jonathan and Joyce uh, agreed on in-person meetings that are recorded. Right? Visual and audio, yeah. Okay. That means that that purely, so, so recorded visual, uh, audio and visual, remote participation. Right, and the remote the, the remote participant should not be just looking at the owner of the laptop's face, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. They need to see the entire room. Okay. So then you're both for rem allowing remote participation in in-person meetings. Yeah. Take it for a test drive to be reviewed in 30 days. Or until we have enough scientific data where we can make an educated you know, decision as opposed to, you know, one or two meetings isn't gonna isn't isn't enough of a sample size. So then it's a no to entirely in-person meetings. Without recording. Without recording. And without access via Zoom. And without access. So that's, okay. I mean, I think there's 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 agreement on that. Um, Fred, I what do you, what are your thoughts? I guess. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with with what you just said. Yeah, yeah, I have no problem with that, and go with that for now. We can revisit it in the future whenever we want. So, or after June fifteenth, if things change. Okay, so you need to you need to change some of these. Um, I, you, can, you can do it before we, we come in to sign, right? If you. Maybe we have to vote in public meeting. Right. Yeah, yeah we're going to want to vote. I, I mean. Let me scroll up for a second. Okay. So I, I don't I don't know that number three changes then. I agree. Okay. Uh, unless I want to add something so long as the meeting is recorded and remote participation is allowed. Does that make sense? Well, yeah, there's the other guy. Yeah, it refers to the guidance, right? Yes. So then can we approve this one? 
Is there anything that 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 we don't agree with? I'm good. Fine. Oh, I'm fine. So uh, I move that we approve order for reopening town buildings to the public. I'll second. Okay, roll call vote, Joyce. Jonathan? Yep. Fred, yes. All right. Um, directive on town employees returning to work. I said near the end of the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, we had this general directive before. Um, all employees are expected to return to work for their regular number of hours. Um, I also wanted to put language in here to um, give some flexibility for department heads um, in terms of if people have a hardship due to COVID that they would have the ability to work from home if it's possible. Um, Cause I think there's still, um, you know, there's still these, there's still a lot of COVID requirements that are there um, that can impose hardships for employees, um, especially in terms of if they have to be out sick because, uh, or be out of work because what's mm -hmm. a close contact or, or things like that. Um, but it would just be something that the department head would, would deal with. And then underneath that, um, it's just restating really, I, I think it's kind of common sense stuff now that COVID-19 is still around. Um, if you have COVID-19 symptoms or other illness, you should not go to work. Um, if it's COVID or not, um, if you're sick, you shouldn't come in. Um, practice uh, social distancing from other persons outside of the household when possible. Um, sh shall wear face covering when inside a vehicle or indoors when you can't maintain six feet of distance from someone outside your household and encouraging employees to um, continue with uh, hand cleaning. Brian, what's the policy been? I, I think I know the policy, but I want to reiterate it. When, obviously we have a, a sick policy in town. Um, if you don't have a lot of sick days at your disposal and you come down with COVID, what has been our policy in terms of if, if you are quarantined for 14 days? And 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 if and if we're no longer able to work remotely for a variety of reasons, what are what are we going to do in that scenario? Because I don't want I want people to stay safe, so I want people to make sure that they do quarantine and they don't worry about their paycheck. Um, I I think at one point we had a policy that. Um, Under one of the, the federal legislation was that was that people would be paid, but I I, I believe that policy is no longer in effect. Right. Thus, the challenge. If 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 someone has COVID or if someone has been is not vaccinated, well, that's a whole other kettle of fish. Um, but. If someone gets comes down with COVID, they should not, and they they have to take fourteen days. I think, right? I think it's ten now. Okay, but still, if you only have five sick days, what do you do? It's not short term disability. But that's a problem right now, isn't it? Well, it depends on the federal legislation and the choice. Hmm. And that and that ended when? Maybe it was the calendar year. End of the uh, end of the calendar year. Yeah. So that's we've been, been living with it, unbeknownst to us, or not unwittingly, I guess. Yeah. I mean, are we all in agreement that we don't want someone to risk their paycheck just because they're being smart about spreading COVID? Does that need to be in this policy? Um, 
it it just talks about employees who are displaying COVID like symptoms. Employees shall continue to practice social. I mean, it it, it it's tangential at best. You know, certainly tangential to to the the first sub bullet. Well, I'm not sure we're in a position if we're, are we ready at this meeting to hash out a policy on extra paid sick leave for COVID. I'm not sure we're, that that's gonna happen tonight. No, but then I just worry about employees who are displaying COVID-19 like symptoms or other illness shall not report to work. COVID like symptoms would also include COVID, COVID. Right. And, and, and so, it, I just don't know how we how we how we look the other way. I mean, I think in the ideal world, you're right, but well, I think that this doesn't address your the situation you're talking about. Well, I think it does because displaying COVID like COVID nineteen like symptoms. If you have COVID, you are displaying those symptoms, in theory. Right, and then you don't report to work. And, and then you exhaust your sick day, sick time, sick time potential. I think this is, yeah, I think this doesn't actually address whether that's sick time or not, right? Yeah, I, you could optimistically read it either way. Didn't we <laughs> talk about this earlier, Brian, uh, maybe in regard to police uh, duty part-time officers, if they weren't, I know they weren't scheduled to work and come down with COVID, the town wasn't responsible for paying them, but if, if they did come uh, down with it while on duty or during duty hours, I thought there were some provisions in there we would pay, pay them yeah. for, for sick leave or something. You're right, I, I'm, I'm, looking, I'm looking it up right now. Um, no, it's, So we do have a, the board does have a temporary COVID-19 paid sick leave directive. And it's not subject to expiration? Uh, the directive shall remain in effect until rescinded by vote of the board. Okay, fine. I'm glad we asked. Okay. So I would agree with all those pieces. Okay. Is there anything, any other bullets on that one? Nope. Again, it's not my screen to scroll. I keep, I'm sitting here trying to scroll on that. <laughs> um, then uh, I move that we um, uh, approve the directive on town employees returning to work near the end of COVID-19 pandemic. Second. Okay, any further discussion? Okay, roll call vote. Joyce? Aye. Jonathan? Yep. Brad? Yes. Face coverings for town employees. That. Says what we had talked about before. Okay. And the previous directive was more restrictive in the sense that there were more situations where you had to wear face coverings. This is uh, backing off on that a bit in the way we've described already. Right, yeah, this is the recommendation of the Board of Health. I move we uh, approve the second revised directive on face coverings for town employees. Second. Okay, roll call vote, Joyce? Aye. Jonathan? Yep. Fred, yes. So I, I'm also not sure that this one needs any edits. Um, this is the guidance on holding meetings. Um, okay. 
because it allow it allows in person meetings. Yeah. Um. Obviously, you have to allow the you have to follow the face cover requirement if you're if you're inside for town buildings. Um. Schedule it through Zoom to allow remote participation and recording. Yeah. And if we're allowed to still use all Zoom meetings, then those requirements well would. I mean, <laughs> you wouldn't need these requirements to have the meeting recorded and done on Zoom. Right. And nothing about this disallows you from having it all Zoom as long as the state says it's illegal to do so. Right. Yeah. Then that's what number two gets at. Any town board committee, I should say, or commission, not commissioner. Commission that allows to do so make to meet fully remote as long as the open meeting law continues to allow such fully remote meetings. Held by held Zoom, fully record. Um, recorded in a link sent to us okay um and four is what we talked about post that was part of the the other policy um so that's really all that is okay so that's, that's something that I, that i think we agree that the board agrees on so uh, I move that we approve the third guidance on holding meetings for town departments, boards, committees, and commissions. Second. Okay. Okay, roll call vote. Joyce? Aye. Jonathan? Yep. Brad? Yes. All right. Moving on, old business. Okay, uh, what are we on next? Uh, old business, discuss uh, Frontier's uh, excess and deficiency funds for deferred capital. Yep, we had talked about this with the finance committee. Um, This is a request for um, from Frontier to use their existing E and D funds, and they it's a request to resend their previously submitted capital um, capital request in the amount of five thousand five thousand dollars and some change. Um, so I was wrong at the finance committee meeting. The uh, Jonathan was right. The local appropriating authority is town meeting. Um, so the question that, that I guess is before the board is whether it wants to put this request on the annual town meeting warrant article, because the laws written or the, the, the code of mass regulations is written such that, um, towns part, as part of the regional school district have 45 days from the date, um, of the vote of the school committee um, to consider the amendment. And if, if the towns don't act, it's considered approved. Um, hmm. So in the past, well, in the in the, the really far past, according to Darius, the school, uh, the school committee completely ignored this requirement and they never went to the towns and they just, they just hmm. reallocated their excess and deficiency funds as they, uh, as they wanted to do. Um, so this is their effort. I, I think this has come before us at least once since I've been here. Um, and I don't think we ended up, I don't think I don't think the select board voted to put it on the warrant. Um, so E&D funds are, are the frontiers equivalent of our free cash. It's, it's funds that they already have um, and they have discretion to use, um, obviously subject to the, um, to the consent or implicit consent of the towns. Um, so my understanding is that Deerfield is not putting it on the warrant and my understanding is that Sunderland is not putting it on their annual time meeting warrant. But, um, but Brian, we, we don't have the ability to spend a, um, free cash without town meeting approval. Yep, that's true. And so we're saying that the schools live by a different set of guidelines in the towns? What am I missing? Mm. I think um, 
Yes, in a way, they have a different set of rules. Wow. That they gotta, they can make their decision, and we've got forty-five days to veto it. I mean, essentially, right? I'm, I'm, they don't use that the is veto. yes. But we we collectively the four towns though, Joyce, which is a pretty oh, well, yeah. I don't know the details of of which, you know, if two out of three towns or uh, three out of four towns, right? Um, it within within forty five days. So that's a pretty tall order administratively. Yeah, unless you've already got a, a town meeting scheduled. Yeah. And Conway is probably also not putting this on their town meeting. Their town meetings already happened, so they would have to hold a special town meeting. Or is their town meeting not happened yet? Yeah, um, I actually, I actually did. I don't know about Conway. Okay. I don't know who's who's there since Tom has left. Tom left. I didn't know that. Where'd he go? Uh, Tom went to Dalton. Oh, wow! Oh, good for him. Um, I, I just struggle with the inconsistency. Um, mm -hmm. Then again, I think that the school should be their own governmental entity that raises their own taxes and spends their own money and we don't get involved, but that's neither here nor there. Mm -hmm. um, I guess I don't feel strongly about putting it on our town meeting warrant. I, I, I don't, um, kind of under the circumstances. Um, I think our finance committee, I'm trying to remember um, how they felt about, um, about this. That was probably the best way for them to pay for these things that they clearly needed. So I don't think what they're proposing to do is particularly controversial. I, I don't either, Joyce, and I would support it at town meeting. I'm just saying that it, the, 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 the process is, is, is we're, mm -hmm. not, we're not consistent. Yeah, that's, I agree. Not consistent. That is, I mean, we're in a system that's not consistent. I don't think it's us. <laughs> Although we're probably consistent too. Are we going to gain anything if we put it on? We'd lose minutes of our lives. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And we'd have to explain it to everybody. Yeah. Um, and is it going to make a difference? No, I support it on town meeting floor. I mean, I would, I, I would say we're crazy not to, but you know, it, it's, it's my frustration with, with town meeting that we do all these things and it's just sort of, yep, done, okay, done, 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 and no. The, so I, I don't think we should put it on town meeting. I do think we should have a conversation about conceptually the, the, the administrative apparatus of all this and, and why we treat the schools differently than the town. Um, but that's separate from this town meeting. And we should do it in concert with the three other towns that are part of the district, not unilaterally. Yeah. So I would I would I would make a motion not to if it requires a motion, Brian, to not put it on there. Um it, it's it's currently not on the draft right now, so you would have to add it. Okay. Then I would support John in taking no action then. Yeah, I would agree. Do we need a vote, Brian? Nope, I just won't put it on the warrant. Okay. Well, that we're about to review. Um, I just checked the Conway in a time meeting warrant. It's not, it's not on there. So they would have to hold a special town meeting. I think their their warrant was 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 finalized before this request came out, I think. Um, so they'd have to hold a special town meeting. That's a tall order within 45 days, and that's three out of four. So I don't know that it necessarily. I don't know that we have much to say. Okay. Um, <clears throat> speaking of the annual town meeting warrant, right? Is that the next one? Okay, right. All right. This should look should look familiar to us because we have seen it before. Um, how do we, what's the best way to do this? I would do it like we did at, at finance. 
Um, and if somebody wants to raise an, an issue, they can raise an issue. And if no one, and, 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 and silence is considered a blessing. All right, so I'll summarize the articles and you can see them on the screen, right? I don't see any. That's a good point. How about now? Yeah. All right, so so stop me if, if we need to discuss, all right? Article one, to hear the annual reports of the officers of the town. Article two, authorize town treasurer to borrow money in anticipation of revenue for fiscal year uh, 22. Article three, authorize the select board to enter into contracts for goods or services in excess of three years. Four, um, authorize town treasurer with approval of the select board to enter into compensating balance agreements. So to have bank accounts. Article five, to apply for, accept, and expend any federal, state, or private grant monies. Six, vote to establish spending limits for town's revolving fund. So I'm proposing for two of these that, that two of these change. Public hearing revolving fund. Um, last year was at 4,000. And with all the marijuana applications, we have blown through that this year. Um, we're up somewhere as close to around 8,000. And that's not good practice to uh, be exceeding those limits. So those are ones that need to change, in my opinion. And I'm recommending it be up to 10. Public hearing is really an in and out for legal advertising. Um, and um, Cemetery Commissioner's Revolving Fund was at 1,000 um, last year. 4,000 is probably better. Again, that's for burials. So, I mean, the cost of burials is has increased. Um, so a thousand dollars is if 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 they had two burials they would be they would be over their limit. Um, so those are the only two that that have changed. Um, Article seven is salaries or compensation of elected officers. These were increased by the two percent cola. Article eight is the Water Department Enterprise Fund of 406909. Article nine is the operating budget, uh, a total of 5,420,670. Yeah. Can you go back to the Enterprise Fund for a second? Maybe it's not the right place, but um, is town meeting uh, intending to address the merger? In what way? The driveway, the 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 driveway. God, the the connective connectivity fee. Is this not the? And if it's not the right spot for it, fine. But I I I still. Um, it's not necessarily related to their operating budget. Um, but that's I I have that as a note as a conversation that that we want to have. Um, I think we talked about the next meeting probably, right? Well, but it is part of their operating budget if they're counting on 5,000 times 43. They are counting on 5,000 times 40. Okay, well, you get my point, I mean. Yeah. But, but it's, still, it's still needed, that amount of money is needed regardless of, of how it's provided, I guess. So that's that's part of their their project, I guess, to implement that is, is to need that money, so. That revenue will need to be generated. Right. Somehow. If, if there's, if there's, because it's needed for project costs. So that money needs to, that revenue needs to be generated from somewhere um, and whether there's differences and <clears throat> differences, excuse me, differences in hookup fee amounts, um, we still need to make up that money somewhere, whether that's from ARPA money or somewhere else. Well, but the, and the other way to look at it, however, is um, if we were, again, it's something that we brought up as an option two years ago 
or if not longer, um, if we if we created some type of a payment method uh, for people to iteratively come up with the five thousand dollars through their quarterly water bills, um, that would be the same revenue generation, but over a longer period of time, giving people the ability, just like, by the way, we have the ability for quarterly taxation for property taxes, as opposed to annual taxation, um, that, that we, that to make it easier on people. So I, I guess my point with this budget is we have effectively tied our hands with options for the people that are part of the district. I don't, I don't see it that way. Um, I mean, we need to pay the, we need to pay the project costs. We need to have money to pay the total project costs. So if there was a payment plan, let's say there was a, a two-year payment plan or something, I, I don't know, I'm just throwing that out there. Yeah. When that note comes due, the idea is that that $200,000 note is going to be paid off in full. Um, so if there's payment plans and let's say we're, we're, we're $20,000 short, let's say we have $180,000 of hookup fees and we're waiting another year for that $20,000 to come in, that $20,000 needs to come from somewhere so we could pay off that note. So the question is, where does it come from in that, in that situation? So we could in theory go back to a special town meeting and decide whether, whether the, the enterprise fund budget needs to front the money or the town needs to front the money or whatever, whatever, whatever the solution is. Possibly, um, unless there's unless there's money that 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 doesn't require further appropriation in that in that instance is so an example of that would be the ARPA money that comes in, which doesn't require town meeting appropriation. Right. It, it's it's subject to the select boards. Yeah. Spending. But if we wanted to use the ARPA money for, for example, Egypt Road then we would have to figure out that $20,000, that hypothetical $20,000 in some other fashion. Yeah, so you could set up, you could set up a, I mean, you could set up a, a, a program for the, for, for the center town that, that would allow for the, an extension of the payments. You would, you would front the $20,000 um, from the ARPA money, and then you, presumably you would collect that back, the $20,000 back over that next year. Oh yeah, so you're not so the ARPA money essentially becomes its own revolving fund almost. Yes, that that's the theory. Okay, all right, I'm I'm fine. I just wanted to make sure we asked the question because I do not want that conversation um, to get kicked down the road. And if town meeting is a is a is a venue to make sure that we don't kick that conversation down the road, I'm happy to do it. I don't think this is a place to talk about that. I think there, there's other other people involved, the other other departments. Uh, it's being discussed now, I know, by water department, water district, and, and I think for, for us to to just bring it up without them being aware of of what options we're talking about, I, I think it's not appropriate right now. We need to involve them at a later meeting and get it all on the table, just not right now. That's what we said two years ago, Fred. Well, the, the, the project is moving slowly, slowly, Jonathan. I know it's two years. It could be another year or two before it's done. We don't know, but. I, I guess I meant the solution for, 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 for payment plans. Well. And nothing's been adopted. There, there's been discussions going on that are, that I, I think are outside of, of uh, a town meeting that, that maybe the board needs to be aware of that and, and be involved in that. I, I got, I'm not speaking for them because they've had their own meetings and discussions and things have been brought up. So we, we need a meeting with all the players to decide on this. Okay, let's move on. Okay. Yeah, so to answer your question, 
the revenue is shown here. It needs to come from somewhere. Okay. Um, okay, Brian, on your your staff, the the position you're adding is that you're proposing is that going to be? Is there a warrant article for that? I'm thinking. Uh, no, it's a budget item. Just the budget item is. Is that going to be discussed in any way? It's the last item here under community development. Okay. Um, it'll be discussed in the in the annual town meeting booklet that I usually send out. Um, it will have a, a description of, of what we're hoping to accomplish with that um, and the goals of that position. Um, but that's that that was what I was thinking. Oh, okay. But it doesn't require a, 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 a town meeting vote to create a, um, a position, an employee's position, correct. Yeah. Um, are there any questions about the, the, the budget, Article 9? Yeah. What, what was the final, the final outcome for the uh, fire department? We're going along with what they submitted. The finance committee voted four to three to to, to fund the the request as submitted. Okay. Okay. Article ten is um, to authorize the board assessors to um, pay down the tax levy by two hundred thousand dollars. Article 11 is to transfer the sum of $20,000 to the vehicle stabilization fund. 12, um, and these are the edits from town council that you're seeing. Um, to create a separate stabilization fund, town building stabilization fund, and to um, transfer $25,000 from free cash into that fund. 13 are the uh, this section starts the capital project appropriations. Uh, 13 is 21,500 for the uh, year two of two for the communications equipment for the police and fire departments to transfer to the state um, system, state radio system. 14 is $30,000 to purchase installation of a backup generator for the town offices. 15 is $12,000 to purchase of a new snowplow. Um, 16, 21,000 for um, the new commercial oven for the cafeteria at the elementary school. 17 is $45,000, and these are all from free cash, uh, to pay for the milling and resurfacing of the driveway and parking lot. 17 is combined with 18 to transfer the sum of 20, uh, 29000 uh, from available funds, general stabilization fund, um, to pay for the remaining costs for the elementary school driveway. 19 is $20,000 for the installation of new tile flooring and area rugs at the elementary school. Um, 20 is $5,000 for the repairs and painting to the interior and exterior of the police station. 21 is $5,000 for the Depart Water Department Enterprise Fund um, to pay for the remaining cost to upgrade the Westbrook Road pumping station. Um, 22 is $1,000 for crack ceiling for the town office driveway. 23 is um, transfer the sum of $15,000 from available funds to be expended for expenses incurred to comply with, um, this is the Police Reform Act. Um, the idea is that we would set aside money that would be available as those obligations uh, become more certain that um, we'll have a little bit of flexibility there. 24 is $20,000 for the Waitley 250th anniversary celebration. 25 starts CPA appropriations. Um, $9,000 for admin. These are the, the, the reserves. Um, so this isn't spending money, this is voting money into the, the, the different reserve accounts for CPA revenue from FY22, 20,500 for both open space reserve and affordable housing um, in 87,000 to the budgeted reserve with another 43,000 for debt service to the town hall. 
The two projects that are being recommended by the CPC is Article 26, $75,000. Um, that's for the handicap accessibility improvements at the uh, library. 27 is $21,000 of CPA funds for improvements to the Veterans Memorial Park. 28 is returning. So the next three articles are, are returning uh, leftover balances from CP, uh, CPA projects. So 28 is $274.23 back to the uh, Historic Resources Reserve. That's left over from the, um, the vault project at the town offices. 29 is $918.06 being returned again for, this, uh, for the storage vault back to the unreserved fund balance. And 30 is $1,006 CPA funds back to unreserved fund balance. And that's left over from the uh, advertising backed up advertising backdrop restoration. 31, 32, and 33 are proposed scenic road designations of Poplar Hill Road, um, Strip Road, and Weber Road. And 34, the remaining ones are zoning amendments. Um, Article 34 is to rezone the parcels identified below as uh, to rezone them from the AR1 to the commercial district. Um, Article 35 is to um, add a definition to the zoning bylaw of trucking and construction equipment in the use table and designate it um, as not allowed in AR1, AR2 and by special permit in commercial, commercial, industrial and industrial. Article 36 is amending the zoning bylaws, um, to modify submissions for site plan documents as provided. Um, it's just requiring electronic submission and also including the Agricultural Commission in the one of the boards that reviews um, larger projects. 37 is adding definitions for indoor marijuana cultivation and adding provisions um, that allow for inspections and monitoring of um, establishments that are, um, <laughs> that eventually get going. Um, 38 is, amend is to amend the zoning bylaw to expand the definition of accessory apartments to allow a 600 square foot dwelling unit in a new accessory structure. And I think that's the last one. The only comment I like to make, and, and going back to the one of the zoning ones about definitions, yeah, they're proposing a change in a use table to trucking and construction equipment. I, I have no problem with, with what's being proposed for the, the different zones here, zoning, but I think there needs to be a, a uh, definition of what trucking and construction equipment means, but maybe not construction equipment, but trucking. What, what there's, there is nine different classes of trucks going from from panel trucks to to semi trucks, uh, and one of the I know one of the reasons they put this in was because of some development when in, in town on State Road uh, that was approved by the building inspector, but because uh, he didn't think it, it was violation of zoning laws, but if you're now you're gonna you're gonna ask the building inspector and and other boards to look at trucking. What does the word trucking mean? If uh, 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 what I want to say, Amazon Prime wants to establish a a, a business somewhere, or it, is that considered trucking? Or you've got, say, a construction company that has uh, construction equipment coming and going. Is that trucking? I mean, there's, there's a wide range of, of how you define trucks. 
And it's going to come down to the building inspector and planning and zoning deciding, well, what is trucking again? Right. And, and I'm with Fred sort of on this because it, it is, it, it again, it's nebulous and, and right. it, it's subjective. It's, there's no objectivity to this that I can see. Right. And like I say, there, there's nine classes of trucks. Look at FERCOG does that for a classification study they're doing on all our roads. Well, there's 13 classes of vehicles. Nine of them are trucks. I mean, that's a definition that everybody recognizes for, for different types of trucks. I, 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 it does control the zoning plan, I, I guess, but as, but as, as far as uh, making it easier to, for committees to decide, I, I don't see that happening. So I, I don't know if that means we don't approve this or, or it comes later on as a, another definition. It, 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 sadly, it's a, it, 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 to me, it's a policy that's created because to, to, to backpedal on, on something that's already taken place. It's not forward thinking, it's, it, right. it's reverse thinking. And, and I, you know, but. I, I, I with all the, uh, the drawbacks that you, you pointed out, it might be, I, I feel like I, I would like to support the planning board on this one and, if we recommend to them that they include next time a definition for trucking so that uh, this isn't a problem 10 years from now, then I think that that might be one way to move forward. Um, and I know it would have been better if people were forward thinking and thought of this before any problems developed on state road, um, but they didn't. And I think there is sometimes you have to be reactive rather than proactive, you know, it happens to everybody. But, but Joyce, the way this is written, it really, it literally is any type of truck. Yeah. Any type. You could have 18 wheelers. Or you could have, you have 25 18 wheelers lining up on, on in, in the commercial part of State Road. Yeah. Well, it, it, it is subject to a special oh. permit. So that's a discretionary approval from the ZBA. Okay. But, it, but, but, it, but th therein lies the subjectivity as opposed to the objectivity. Right, but if we don't have this, does that mean they're not allowed? Well, like under current law, it seems like there's a trucking business there. So current law is being interpreted that that, that, should, that should get to be there, right? And this is supposed to be some kind of improvement over that. Uh, and, uh, I'll give you another example. One of my neighbors is, is it's got a home business that's into, uh, uh, electrical. He has trucks coming and going all times of the day, even at night. It, it's a, it's a, it, by definition, it's a truck. Does that mean this kind of business is no longer allowed for home businesses in a, say, residential area? Well, trucks come to my house too. Yeah. Well, but this is every day, day and night. Uh, I, I have my concern here and, and to Brian, and I guess it went to the planning board last October, whenever they were discussing this and haven't received any feedback at all. Okay. So. All right. Well, the other way to look at it is the more trucks, the better, the, and the higher value, the better, because I believe this, these all should be subject to our, um, our all of it. Just like what happened to, uh, to uh, Bear back when, when they changed their their um, legal organization uh, back, you know, 20 years ago or whatever it was, 15 years ago. Property tax. Well, Bring on. that's assuming a truck is registered in, in Waitley. Yeah. Doesn't um, have to be. If, if it's housed here on a regular basis. No. Right? No. There's no, he's talking about trucks coming and going. That could be. Oh, well, yeah, but if, if, if it's here. camping there every night, it's going to be registered in Waitley. No. And it's, it, it, right, it should be, but that's not the case, Jonathan. I know that. There's companies that have that's, that's a separate issue that may, we may want to address. Yeah, okay. So I, I, I guess I support what they're trying to do, but I, I think they need more clarification on definitions here. 
I think it might be a good idea if 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 someone got the ear of the planning board to perhaps figure out a friendly amendment to this prior to town meeting. Um, that probably would be a good idea. Well, what do we have that means someone doing it who has the capacity to do it, and and it's not going to happen in this meeting. So let's move on. But again, I would strongly suggest that. A friendly amendment that that is agreed to by everybody be considered because this will come up in the floor town meeting I, I would bet my last dollar right okay keep going brian that's it we got through them all we just went back to this one okay what do we need to do Anything? Well, if, if you want to recommend all of these, then then you would vote to approve the warrant as written, and then we have to sign it and post it. I'll make a motion to approve the the warrant as written. A second. Okay. Any further discussion? No. Okay. Roll call vote. Jonathan. Yep. Joyce. Aye. Fred. Yes. Okay. Brian, would we have community planning grant application? Yep. Um, so at this point, I I don't have the grants written. Um, I had sent to you the the scope of works uh, for each of the grants. That's essentially what we, that's essentially what we would be asking money for. Um, and then I would also need. Um, We'd also need the board to sign the letters of support that I had. Uh, I think I'd also share with you in the meeting, in the meeting material. Uh, the grants require uh, a letter of support from the municipal CEOs, which in this case is the select board. So uh, in terms of a motion, you need a motion to sign letters of support for these so, um, these grants given when well, not looking at the actual grant, but we're looking at the scope of work, which um, are things that we support. Right. Yeah. One is uh, I can explain it quickly. Obviously, one is the a uh, planning study for the exit 35 area. And then the other one is yeah. was focused on affordable housing. And, and really the vehicle for that, I think, is that at least was recommended by FERCOG was the. Um, was to really just go for a housing production plan and get that certified by DHCD. Well, I would move that we sign the letters of support for these grants. Second. These, when are, did you say these have to be submitted by is it June 4th or something? Yeah, it's actually this Friday. So it's we're, we're getting tight. So you need, timing. Us, you need us to come in and sign, or is it just the chair? Um, they're written right now as, um, as as the board as the board. Okay. Okay, so we'll be in by Friday to sign. Okay, roll call vote. Uh, Joyce. Aye. Jonathan. Yeah. Brad. Yes. Can I please make a suggestion that we all try to get in there tomorrow as someone who's written hundreds of grants in my life, not having things signed the day that they are due is painstakingly uh, <laughs> nerve wracking. Yes. And um, if you, uh, we'd also appreciate that because we can get the warrant signed and posted. Um, okay. How early as soon as one... possible. How early could one come and sign these things? Um, how early does one want to come? Well, one need one might need to meet their student by nine o'clock uh, at work in Northampton. Um, I it, it'll be ready. It'll be ready by then. By nine. <laughs> by eight. It, it'll be ready. Uh, it'll be ready tonight. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Then, uh, then I can come by arbitrarily early if, it, if it's going to be there before you leave tonight. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Um, and then um, I think we should probably just have a motion to submit the two grant applications too. A motion, make a motion to submit, submit the grant application. Second. Okay, roll call vote. Jonathan? 
Yeah. Joyce? Aye. Fred? Yes. Hey, hey, Fred, just because obviously Brian has work ahead of him, yeah. I'm, I'm going to encourage us to cover things in this meeting that absolutely need to be covered and not anything else because, you know, the poor guy has is not obviously leaving the office after this meeting's over. Right. Okay. That's why there's a cop. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I don't know what else. What else do we have? Uh, town administrator updates. Um, yep, that's it, really. Um, water merger project update. Uh, they're back before the ZBA tomorrow uh, tomorrow night uh, for the special permit for the pump house. Um, it, one hiccup that's that's currently being worked out by town council and council for um, the landowner is that there was uh, there appears to be a title issue that needs to be worked out before we can acquire an easement. Um, so that's being worked out by our legal respective legal councils. Um, Haydenville Road, Haydenville Road reconstruction, Mountain Street reconstruction, um, that continues to be on the tip. The tip was approved by the, uh, by the FERCOG transportation planning organization, um, so that we didn't get kicked off the past two years. Um, Fred's been to most of those meetings, um, so it's, it's been some good work. Um, I think it, it pays to show up. Um, right. Shows we're interested. Um, in terms of, so we had a resignation from the highway department, um, and we will be advertising. We'll need to advertise to fill that position. Actually, we're already, we are advertised, right? Um, I think there was an ad out. Um, so we're advertising for that position as a operator laborer for the highway department. So we'll have, hopefully have a recommendation as and a candidate, probably hopefully by the next meeting, if not the meeting after. And that's it, almost three hours. Wait, don't we want to talk about vacation or no? Oh yeah, that's why Keith, that's probably why Keith stayed on the whole time. Right, poor Keith. Um, yeah, so I've, I've forwarded you the request. It was um, some of the employees are, will probably have difficulty getting under the 80 hours for vacation time for a number of reasons. Uh, now that they're down a person and it, um, I don't know if Keith wants to add to that, but. Yeah, I just, I brought it to, I had a conversation with my guys this morning as we're going forward, dealing with the, you know, the tasks that I still need to get done this month with the with private contractors. And obviously knowing that we were we felt we were in good shape so that everybody would be able to be ending June 30th under the or meeting our requirements under 80 hours. And now I'm starting to feel that that's going to be very difficult. And, and I hate to, in a sense, more or less pick days where we have to shut the department down to so that we're not losing our vacation time. Keith, I'm all for this. Can we make a, a plan, though, so that people start to chip away at that vacation time this summer? Yeah, I, I don't think we're we're certainly, as I told Brian, no one's going to be close to, you know, the, the 120 hours. That's for sure. But I just think that we're going to be a little over the 80. Mm -hmm. Is this um, something that we can just keep it to the highway department for the particular special circumstances there and this doesn't just apply blanket to all employees i think that's how it's written isn't it or am i no I, well i thought it said something about the police chief and other people that might be affected well i was i was just guessing as to as to who may have personally i think they should come to us on a case-by-case -case basis oh. that's fine what, what if we just extend the, the time period they have to use it till, I don't know, say end of the year or something, or three months or six months for, for everybody in town. And, and then it's not an issue of, of one department or another. But I think the important thing is this is an issue that just affects one department. Right. So uh, if we're going to have a solution, let's just have the solution for that department and everybody else just stays the same. Right, because it, 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 it's based upon a, the, the unforeseen resignation. 
Um, I think other town, I, th I think other departments, if, if they have issues because of unforeseen circumstances, they can come to us. Um, I, I think we have made our vacation policy a lot more user friendly over the last three to five years um, than it ever was before in terms of accrual and all that kind of stuff. Um, I personally think we should have a, 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 not, a not a maximum vacation, but a minimum vacation because people aren't taking them sometimes. But let's just get this done for, for, for the highway department. And then if somebody else has, has something going on, then they can come to us. So, so what are we asking the highway for the highway department for them to what have another year or no limit no, on hours? What are we? Isn't asking? it just this year, Keith? What's that? Isn't it just for this year? Yeah, I mean the the policy says that you cannot carry forward more than eighty hours. Right, and we're just changing it for this current fiscal year. That's all yeah. I'm asking. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so people will need to use that time because the next thing, you know, next time around. It's Eighty, right? Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, that's extending it. Okay, for another year, basically. What you're telling them they can use. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, right. But then it's back to eighty next year. Right. It's not forever. It's just a one. This is a snapshot in time policy to change. Right. Okay. Okay. I'll make a motion. Second. Okay. All those in, in favor? Okay. Uh, Joyce? Aye. Jonathan? Yep. Brad? Yes. Okay. Anything else, Brian? No. Okay. Nope. Motion to adjourn. Yep. Okay. So we'll see everybody at our what annual town meeting on June 5th at 6 okay. o'clock at the elementary school. June, fi June 5th? 15th, oh, yep. 15. 15th. Yeah. And do we need to roll call the adjournment? Okay. Motion to adjourn. Okay. Joyce? Aye. Jonathan? Yeah. Fred, yes. Okay. Meeting adjourned. Thank okay. you. Thanks, everybody. Okay. Thanks. Good night. Good night, Good night Amy.